Thanks, Ian. The ex-president of the United States of America and current felon is running away from debating the Democrats' challenger because he is a very brave man. Nobody knows more about bravery than him. Believe him. He fled so fast it looked like they were having a sale on chicken wings three streets away. Now he's the confused, unsteady old codger in the race and no amount of arthritic dancing to YMCA is going to prove otherwise. In other billionaire news, the king gets two new helicopters and a pay rise. It's all he's ever wanted, apart from all the other stuff that he gets for free, provided by us poor dopes who pay taxes. That and more coming up with me, Nick Abbott, after the new news at 10 on LBC. On your radio, on Global Player, and... Play LBC. Leading Britain's conversation, this is LBC. LBC from Global, leading Britain's conversation with Nick Abbott. Hello, boys. Well, let's get back to it. A typhoon with a name I do not know how to pronounce has been wreaking havoc in the Philippines and Taiwan, with the Philippine government forced to declare a state of calamity, not a state of emergency. They declared a state of calamity. <laughs> Manila received more than 300 millimetres of rain, uh, resulting in floods reaching as high as one-storey buildings in some places. What? Meanwhile, it's so hot in the American West, a European visitor got third-degree burns on his feet and had to be taken to hospital when he briefly walked on sand dunes in California's Death Valley National Park. The ground temperature would have been much hotter than the air temperature that day, and the air temperature was 50 degrees centigrade. 123 Fahrenheit. Meanwhile, Britain is set to bake this weekend amid hopes a mini heat wave could save summer and say and uh, send the temperatures hurtling past 30 degrees centigrade, making it hotter than parts of Brazil. Wherever that is. Temperatures are set to climb to 27 degrees on Frantic Friday, which we've just experienced. And they call it that because more than 3 million people get in cars and hit the roads to sit in traffic jams while on the way to the airport where they'll find the plane has been cancelled for their convenience. And after some light showers on Saturday, many can expect sunny spells and dry conditions across large swathes of the UK, which is a very unusual sentence, as it includes the word swathe, and it's actually good news. Isn't that incredible? Yes. It really is. Sunday should see the hottest day of the year so far, as sun seekers might see the mercury sizzle to above 90 degrees recorded in uh, London last week. And I suppose I'll have to translate His Majesty's Fahrenheit for European Surrender Centigrade for the left woke -arati. It's perfectly simple. To get from Fahrenheit to Centigrade, you simply double it and add 32. So double 90 is 190, and 90 plus 32 is 242. <gasps> It's going to be 242 degrees centigrade this weekend. Can you believe that? No. It comes after a disappointing start to July, which came after a disappointing June, which was preceded by a dispiriting May and a quite awful April. But at least January, February and March were dismal as well. And the hottest spells are thanks to an Iberian plume. Thank you. Which is pushing warm weather from uh, Europe where temperatures have been high as 40 degrees centigrade this summer. So we will, in fact, be breathing pre-used European air that's been inside French people. Disgusting. <laughs> the southeastern areas of the country are going to experience the hottest conditions. Listeners in Glasgow will get their own weather. I can check on that while you wait. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Aha! A what? Not raining at the moment. Pfft, rubbish. It will be raining tomorrow, of course. And then, wow. It will not be raining in Glasgow on Sunday, Monday or Tuesday. Can you believe that? No. No, me neither. It will be raining on Wednesday, though, and on Thursday, and on Friday, and the following Saturday, and uh, Sunday the 4th, and Monday, and Tuesday, and every day for the rest of your lives. <laughs> but not for uh, this weekend. You'll be able to almost dry out. Would you like to hear the long-range forecast for the next four weeks? No. OK, end of July, first week of August. At first, dry with sunny spells, light winds on Sunday. Cloudy with some rain in the northwest. Breezy, while in the southeast, 
possibility of some stormy showers with thunder, lightning, very, very frightening. Rock and roll! And then middle two weeks of August. Dry, settled weather likely, except for you know where. And warmer than average conditions with some short-lived hot spells. <gasps> Warmer than average conditions with some short-lived hot spells? Well, take it! So, uh, Donald Trump has bravely refused to take part in a debate with Kamala Harris, branding her a Marxist fraud, because that's the way you run a serious campaign to be leader of the world's most powerful nation, by running away and throwing infantile insults over your shoulder. You know, very important people, they come to me, they say, Sir, they say, Sir, how are you so brave? And I say, thank you. So these important, big people, they come to me and say, Sir, how can I be more like you? And I say, it's hard. But nobody more is, knows more about bravery than me. Believe 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 me. Okay. The first female U.S. president, Kamala, pronounced Kamala Harris, has enjoyed a ground swell of support from people who would rather not be led by a man who wears more makeup than she does, and uses more hairspray than Dolly Parton. Don't be rude. They'd rather be led by a smart woman than a fraud and a sex abuser and a failed businessman and a con artist whose backers make the villains in a James Bond film look like reasonable people. And Fat Donnie is waddling away as fast as he can without the aid of a golf cart because he knows he'll have his giant bottom handed to him in a debate with Kamala Harris. At first he said he wouldn't debate her on the TV channel that the debate with Trump and Biden was supposed to have taken place on wanting the home turf of his favourite Donny-loving channel, Rupert Murdoch's Fox News. And then, after thinking it through for a second, he decided to heroically run away from debating her at all. <laughs> and the Powder Puff ex-president put out a statement, which was supposedly from a staffer, but has Donny's tiny little fingers all over it. It read, Given the continued political chaos surrounding crooked Joe Biden and the Democrat Party, general election debate details cannot be finalised until the Democrats formally decide on their nominee. There is a strong sense by many in the Democrat Party, namely Barack Hussein Obama, that Kamala Harris is a Marxist fraud who cannot beat President Trump, and they are still holding out for someone better. Therefore, it would be inappropriate to schedule things with Harris because the Democrats very well could still change their minds. Anybody buying that as an excuse for Donnie running away from the debate? No. <laughs> the only people buying that are people buying Trump's merchandise and expecting it will make them look cool. <laughs> I looked at his uh, Trump store website. Have you seen it? God, that stuff that's on there. And I just clicked at random on uh, the first item that I saw. And it was a, a hoodie, a Mar-a-Lago hoodie. Yours for only $150. And in the only sizes that are sold out, guess. Extra large and double extra large. The only sizes you can't have, they are totally sold out. Extra large and double extra large. And I thought, well, that's just probably a coincidence. So I'll, I'll look at the other hoodies and see what's available there. In fact, I tried six hoodies on Donald Trump's uh, store site and none of them were available in anything other than small and medium. All of the uh, super hefty sizes have uh, been completely sold out. And don't ask what they're made of. I mean, I tried to find out, but apparently it's a secret what Donald Trump's hoodies are actually made of. Doesn't say where they're made either. Couldn't possibly be China, could it? So I've got no idea what they're made of, but if you buy one, I wouldn't stand near to uh, any open flames if I were you. <laughs> You don't need a degree from Trump University to figure that out. And who is uh, Kamala, pronounced Kamala Harris? Well, she's for uh, minimal gun control. You know, just a tiny bit. Like not selling assault weapons to the mentally ill, for instance. And Trump is against all gun control. All of it. And boasted about that just a few weeks ago to the high-spending gun lobbyists. And Kamala Harris is for state education. And Donald Trump wants to shut down the Department for Education and cut its funding in half. And as the biggest killer of children in America is guns, death by guns in uh, children and teens went up 87% in the 10 years to 2021. Which, if I could be bothered to do homework, I bet would coincide with the emergence of those uh, AR-15s. 
the serial killer's weapon of choice. The biggest killer of children in America is guns. And, and that really is a dividing line between the Republicans who say they love children. You know, they love them so much that an abortion at any age is something they can't abide, whatever the circumstances. But after the child is born, they don't seem to care that much. You know, a woman without health insurance in America is expected to come up with $40,000 for a birth in a hospital. And the Republicans fight universal health care every step of the way. If you're not a millionaire, then you're out of your mind if you're voting for that party. And when there's a school shooting, and in 2021 there was about 150 school shootings in America. 150. Instead of passing laws that might prevent another school shooting, Republican lawmakers wear assault rifle badges on their lapels to show they won't budge on gun control. Why? Well, gun manufacturers have more money to give politicians than the victims of their products. Might have something to do with it. Meanwhile, in this country... <laughs> it seems like we've turned that corner. Um, uh, America's corner is uh, approaching fast, and uh, we'll find out whether they've turned it in November or not. 0345-6060-973, text 84850, email at lbc.co.uk. If you're on Twitter, it's at LBC. Hey, by the way, did that French opening ceremony get any better? I saw the, I saw the first half hour. It looked, um, it, well, it made me want to go and see the London Games opening show again, is what it made me think. 0345-6060-973, Nick Abbott, LBC. This is LBC. Nick Abbott on LBC. Call 0345 6060 973. What we got here is a failure to communicate. Yes, I've had a failure to communicate over the past uh, week or so. I thought I was going to die on the air on uh, Friday, and I'm sure it pretty much sounded like that. And uh, I know I'm only 15 minutes in, but it seems to be better this time around. We'll find out when we get there. So I went to the doctor and he uh, put a uh, camera up my nose and down my throat. What? Yeah. <laughs> and he said, uh, you know, essentially, there's absolutely nothing wrong with you, which I would disagree with, on, you know, on, um, in, in many ways. So I'm just going to take it easy for a while. Um, I'll m maybe have to ease up on the Donald Trump impressions because I'm sure that's not going to do me any good. Rochester. Hello, Lulu. Darling, oh, four things. I just feel Leo Todd, I would say, but I'm so glad you're back. Oh, thanks, Lulu. I don't want to put pressure on you, Nick, but, but so many people depend on you for their weekly... Yes. ...laughter and... Oh. No. no. Hey, Lulu, there's something wrong with your phone. Window, work. how's that? No, it, it's, it's one of these things, I don't know what it is, but every now and again I'll get a call from somebody and their phone line cuts off the beginning part of what they say. It's, it's almost as though your phone is, um, uh, is sort of sound sensitive and it only leaps into action when it hears you say something, thereby cutting off the first half of uh, whatever sentence it is that you're uh, uttering. Call back. Like, like that, yeah. <laughs> oh. We'll call you back, Lulu. Well, uh, we'll call her back straight away. John says, uh, glad to hear that you got your voice back, but did Meg Meghan Markle ever explain why she took it away from you in the first place? Oh, my God. I mean, if there's one thing that I have not missed when um, uh, during the course of this week when I sort of dipped out of that whole uh, news cycle is the endless stories about what Meghan Markle has done and how Prince Harry is a disgrace and uh, etc. and so on. And it, they, they just never let up. It's as though each columnist in the rabid right-wing press has been given instructions to just, to just keep going over and over and over again. Jan Moyer, Harry's just made his most outrageous and sanctimonious claim to date. Of course, I mean, they're all uh, against the two of them because the um, Hazard out of Hazard and Sparkles, is going after them for the phone hacking thing. So that might inform their, uh, the press's ire because somebody's actually fighting back. Because normally the 
victims of their abuse don't have the money or the time and they just can't be bothered but every now and again somebody comes along like uh, Srelton John and Hazard out of Hazard and Sparkles and takes them to task otherwise it'd be absolutely blooming anarchy in this country so we appreciate it thank you don't let him get you down Harris just made his most outrageous and sanctimonious claim to date, says Jan Moyer. Richard Eden, insincere Megan, sent out warning signs from the start. <laughs> it just goes on and on and on. Megan, unlikely to join Harry for Olive Branch trip to reconnect with his family, says Insider. As in, they just made it up. Frogmore Cottage lies empty more than a year after Prince Harry and Meghan Markle were booted out. <laughs> it being their fault that that property remains empty. Will Meghan Markle miss Harry's Invictus Games in Birmingham in 2027? Ah, uh, yeah, why, why wouldn't she want to come to this country to face abuse in person by people who claim to be uh, patriots? Exclusive. Watch Meghan Markle. is trying to rewrite history. Oh, God. It's just painful. What's wrong with these people? <laughs> I mean, the, the rabid right-wingers say that people like me have got... Uh, Trump derangement syndrome, but they really do have Meghan derangement syndrome. I mean, is there a single person that has ever lived, living or dead, that has irritated the British right-wing press more than Meghan Markle? Any thoughts on uh, why that might be? Um. Any thoughts? Tea texts, the dinglings hailed their tough leader Trump against Biden. But as soon as Trump had genuine competition, Trump has his tail between his legs. Hilarious. Yeah. Bravely running away. While claiming to be a hero. <laughs> and the, fight, the, the latest fight with him is uh, that he, uh, he he's um, furious that people are suggesting that he didn't get shot with a bullet. That it was just a little bit of shrapnel. Gave him the tiniest, teeniest, tiniest little cut in his ear. Which is... It's obvious that it wasn't a bullet because there's a picture of him today without that silly patch on his ear and you, you can't tell that there ever was a cut there. So like two weeks later, it was an actual bullet, then it would be uh, stitched together and look like a cauliflower. I was speaking to somebody on the day, uh, just uh, mo moments after it happened, a reporter in Washington who had inside uh, information from the Secret Service there. And he said at that time, right at the moment, that it was a piece of glass off the teleprompter that nicked his ear, not a bullet. But of course, that doesn't make him look very brave, does it? He got the tiniest little nick. And, um, you know, then he got up and he did the tiny fist pump. Make him look like a cartoon superhero. But if it was just a tiny piece of glass that nicked his ear, but where it, to an extent where it didn't even need stitches, well, that makes him uh, seem a little less brave, doesn't it? A little bit more like a baby. <laughs> but mining it for all he can get. Hey, we got Lulu back. That took a while. God. Where have you been, Lulu? I've just been fiddling around with my settings. Oh. But anyway, I'm all good now. <laughs> Nick, yes. so happy you're back. Seriously. H -A -P -P -Y. P -P -Y, Nick. <laughs> yeah. So, Nick, so um, I spoke to you just before the election, and I told you I was going to election night party, and I was staying up all night, which I did. Hmm. And then I called home about 7 in the morning. I had a carpenter in, and I wanted to sleep all day, but I could not because I had banging and crashing. Oh, so I was up yeah. for 24 hours. But anyway, all good. Great result. Happy. Um, a couple of three things. Yes. So, but which was uh, the which was the most deliriously happy moment of the evening? Uh, I, I bet it had something to do with uh, this guy. I don't know anything. Was it that guy? <laughs> oh, supreme! Sharing the stage with a man in the worst <laughs> item of clothing <laughs> I've ever seen in my life. It was absolutely horrific. It, it looked he looked like the um, the baddie in one of those teen slasher films. Yeah, you know that particular mask I am familiar with. As I I have a little. Um, dalliance in a pub my friend owns and the three sheets I've told you about that three sheets of the wind in Rochester and uh, one of our members of staff 
will sometimes wear that mask, oh. and it's very disconcerting, it's, I know. Yeah, disturbing is what it is. Oh, it's awful. Because it, it looks um, like, um, it looks like the result of walking through fire. <laughs> it does. Yeah, it, it's nasty, it's horrible. But yeah, so, um, Nick, what I wanted to say to you was, um, I've been, so we had the Labour government, you know, in power, and that was beautiful, and I felt very relaxed for a couple of weeks there, yeah. you mm -hmm. know? And then Trump got, in quotes, assassinated, and no, uh, it, I thought, it, oh... He didn't. <laughs> yeah, quite. So I thought, oh, my God, this is yeah, awful. I, I got know. into despair, you well, know? Well, when I saw that picture, I mean, I was on the air when it happened. This, this sort of stuff always yeah. happens while I'm on the air. I know, for some, for some I reason. Know. I mean, the amount of major events that have happened while I've been on the air is just extraordinary. Yeah. I think you've got power. I have um, <laughs> bad luck in that regard. <laughs> yeah. And uh, I saw the picture of the, you know, the flag fluttering in the, in the background and him doing yeah. a fist pump with a tiny little bit of blood in his face. I thought, oh, well, that's it. He's just he's just yeah. won. There's no, no question exactly. about it. He might as well call the race off. Uh, he's the winner. Yeah. But I don't uh, feel like that now. No. And, you know, I mean... I didn't really know too much about Kamala. I kind no. of like the cut of her jib, but I didn't really know much. To, to, but I actually feel she's like a breath of fresh air. Totally. Oh, my God. Yeah. And, you know, the fetid, narcoleptic fart factory that is Donald Trump, you know, is going to be <laughs> washed away by this beautiful woman who is... Oh, my God, she's everything I've ever dreamed of. You well, know, let's I'm... not get carried away. But, <laughs> but I'm feeling so good about that. Fessage, narcoleptic, fart factory. <laughs> Don't be rude. <laughs> but seriously, right, Luna, right? I'm going to write that down and use it later. <laughs> yeah, but I'm feeling good. Are you? I am feeling uh, very, very positive about that, yes, because yeah. I feel that um, it's almost as though the world has uh, uh, breathed a sigh of relief that, I think uh, so. that Joe Biden was obviously too old. Yeah, of uh, course. For, the, for this uh, race. I mean, he, he seems like a good yeah. person, but yeah. uh, Donald Trump, for whatever reason, and I, th I suspect that he's made a deal with the devil, has, yeah. um, he seems to run um, very vigorously on a, uh, a diet of uh, food that you get in a bucket. Yes, of course, of course. And so yeah. it needs somebody as he vigorous did. as him, somebody who can, uh, yeah. you know, shout as loudly and uh, just take him apart bit by bit, because all yeah. he has really is childish insults that's of pretty course, much yeah. all he's got and that's all that he's thrown at to kamala harris so far she's a she's a marxist apparently oh yeah okay, <laughs> okay. sure jan but you know what nick um i you know for the first time today i wish that i was a cartoonist because i would so love you know that jd vance character that fraud that he does seem like a character like a like a oh. made-up character yeah i, yeah. Do, I don't Do believe yeah. anything about him no, he, he's an absolute... Well, he's a fraud. I mean, he's, you know, decried Trump, and now he thinks, oh, yeah. I've got a, like, you know, a great train to get on. as yeah? America's Hitler. Hitler, yeah. exactly. But, you know, I, I would love, if I could draw, if I could draw, I'd love to draw a cartoon of him, because, you know, he's kind of, he's going to run to fat. He's a bit of a chubster, right? So I'm thinking a picture of him, you know, about 20 stone with a MAGA hat on, eating chicken out of a bucket, surrounded by loads of cats. <laughs> so How would that be? He does right? seem to have a weird thing about um, people with <laughs> children. Yeah, I mean, he, he, he keeps going on and on about uh, childless people who don't have yeah. um, as much of a... Uh, uh, as much skin in the game as people yeah. who have children, which Insane. is silly unless you don't plan on living yeah. further than tomorrow because of, oh, course of course you of course of course you have skin in the game for the future of the planet yeah. if you are planning to live for a while yeah yeah totally he's an idiot and actually i saw a wonderful um post on twitter someone was saying well i'm sorry but donald's got to carry him to term <laughs> 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 Brilliant, eh? <laughs> I guess, yeah, I guess it is, yeah. All right, good work. Thanks a lot, Lulu. Right. Cheers, my dear. Ta-da. 0345-6060-973. What surprises me is that uh, those, uh, the good old boys in uh, our America who are, um, you know, not too keen on uh, the LGBTQ and uh, all of the rest of it. I'll stop there and just say plus, even though the plus part always uh, seemed a bit offensive to me. 
I mean, uh, the people who aren't um, included in the LGBTQ, they just get a plus. What is that? Isn't that offensive? Right, people can't be bothered to uh, give them a, a letter. You just give up. Oh, to hell with it. They're all just a plus now. <laughs> but I feel that, you know, those dinglings who hate all that stuff, why are they so attracted to men who wear so... Not, not just a little bit of makeup, it's so much makeup. Tell me J.D. Vance does not wear eyeliner. Look at a close-up of J.D. Vance. Tell me that man is not wearing eyeliner. And a lot of it. And it looks like he does his lashes as well. But what is that about? And Donald Trump, of course. I mean, uh, Boots, the chemist, doesn't have as much makeup as Donald Trump. It's like they present him with a bucket of it and they push his face directly into it first thing in the morning and just scrape off the residue with a trowel. So that's just properly weird to me. But, you know, uh, dictators and wannabe dictators all have uh, something odd about them, don't they? They all, they all have a weird physical thing, like they do something bizarre with their hair or they've got a tiny little moustache or some odd thing, all of them. And Trump's no different. 0345 uh, You can text 84850, email nick a at lbc.co.uk. If you're on Twitter, it's at LBC. Uh, let me uh, take this moment to remind you that, uh, apart from the other things that I do, I do a podcast with Carol McGiffin. Yeah. Now, the idea is that it is the world's most um, helpful podcast. We dole assistance out like it's going out of style. And if you have an issue that you want us to address, then simply send it to the following address. Nick and Carol at global.com. N-I-C-K-A-N-D-C-A-R-O-L at global.com. And prepare for total satisfaction. Oh, right, yeah. Ask for it by name on an internet near you. What's your problem with Nick and Carol? I think you'll love it. Oh, look, it's 10.30 on LBC. The news headlines here with Tim Daly. This is LBC with Nick Abbott. Call 0345 6060 973. Tweet at LBC. Text 84850. Listen to him. He knows everything. Uh, here's a person who is uh, looking for uh, my wisdom. Craig says, I've booked return tickets to London for Thursday and a ticket to Kew Gardens. Any recommendations? I'll report back next Friday evening, says Craig. Well, do you mean that you're coming down and then back again on the same day? Because if that's the case, then you ain't going to have no time to do nothing else but uh, go to Kew Gardens. So I'd just stay there for as long as possible and then uh, catch a train out again. But if you are spending at least another day in London, then I would, I'd would i take the boat down. Take the boat! I think you'll find it's a delight, particularly when the weather is nice. Take the boat out to Greenwich and uh, mooch around uh, Greenwich for a little while and then come back. And you can thank me later. No, wait. I've changed my mind. You can thank me now. Yay! You. 0345 6060 973. West Devon. Hello, Rose. Oh, hello, Nick. Rose. Just let me turn the radio down a bit more. Turn Hold the on. radio down. Sorry. An ecstasy of fumbling. Yes. Oh. Where's the radio? It's like three rooms away. Ah. I'm on a landline. Oh, that's why yes. you're coming in as clear as a bell. Am I? Mm. Well, I don't know what, why it was, but for ages, since I was kicked out of my home, mm. and, well, not since then, but the minute I got over here, unsuit unsuitably, I was talking to you and other people on this little plastic mobile, and it felt all wrong. Yeah. Just to save money, I thought, well, what's the point of having a landline? And in the end, I indulged myself because I just kept feeling I want it, I want it, and it just feels better, you know? Yeah, you feel uh, less like you're boiling your brain. Well, that's true, yes. And you're, you're holding something... Solid. Solid, yeah. yes, mm. that's right. Which, in Fury, you can slam down on the receiver, whereas there's nothing as oh, satisfying yes. as that with a mobile phone, is there? Just stabbing at the screen for the red button is just not the same at all. No, absolutely not, no. And I have been guilty of doing that, actually. Yeah. Very naughty of me to... You well, know, no, you just let it... If it's in you, Rose, let it out. Well, don't say that to me, for heaven's sake. <laughs> <laughs> You'll never hear the end of it. Oh, my God. No, I have self-control is not one of my fortes. Yeah. But, listen, your, that voice sounds very strong to me. So, your voice. I oh, mean, 
Right. I well, don't mean I, because of the landline. I mean, I'm doing it. I'm doing a James O'Brien, and I put the microphone very close to my face, whereas normally I'm pract pract practically over the other end, other side of the studio, and I'm shouting. So I'm not doing that now, uh, which means that I'm not projecting very much. Oh, you're not putting so anything like so much strain on it, yeah, then, are you? That's right. Stu yeah. Stupid me for uh, uh, been doing it wrong all this time. Who, th who, and I, I you think I would, I would uh, now do a radio show? Apparently not. No, no. Well, you know, what we want in that studio is trained professionals. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Sadly, just me. Clive was absolutely adorable, you know, when he took over on Saturday. Well, it must have been um, infuriating for him, really. I mean, I only gave him a, a, another half an hour to do. But um, it's, no. you know, you get your head uh, in place to start at a certain time. And then things oh. change and you have to... Um, I don't know, it's it's almost like going straight into third gear without going through gears one and two. You know what I mean? Oh, I see. Yes. Well, you wouldn't have known it. He was just perfect. Was he? He was, yeah, that half hour he didn't seem to mind at all. And when he took over on Saturday, hmm. he ensured us that you were coming back. <laughs> it was as if he thought we were all thinking, where is he? Well, I didn't know I was going to come back or not because you hear people no. who lose their voice. And whatever it is that I've got is, is not uncommon. I've heard so many people have had this thing with the voice that goes away and then they say, uh, you know, it, uh, it might come back straight away and then it might go away again. And uh, Oh, I see. Yes, I don't know what it was. I mean, should we say that it's the, the thing, you know, it? Harvard. Don't say oh, it. maybe could be that. Yeah, maybe. But that's what happened uh, about a month or so ago, and then ever since the, the voice is a bit cracked. You know, it's not quite there. I'm not, um, I'm not whispering exactly, but then I'm not um, pushing the envelope. No, well, that's very wise. Yeah, I thought it might be to do with you overdoing things, but I think from what you've just been saying, it is. It is specifically voice related, isn't it? Yeah. Overdoing thing. What you mean, like going out and having a party? No, no, just never like have that. a holiday. Oh. And and um, I I just kept hearing my mother because she used to say, you know, all my life really. Yeah. I'd, I'd suddenly say, oh God, I feel lucky. She'd say, well, you overdo it. Yes. You keep overdoing things. And yeah, I think need... she saw my father in me because he was to... always like, you, you know. You need to relax more, Rose. Hell for leather, and then. If a job's worth doing, it's worth doing properly, you know. Oh, blimey. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just fudge it and uh, paste over the cracks and hope nobody notices. Well, that's more, more me, yes. Yeah. But I was... Have I got time now? I've nattered on. I was going to say something about Kamala. Yeah, go on then. Well, basically, I, I just agreed with Lulu a lot, actually. And, you know, she does seem so strong and so young. Yes. And so... Well, intelligent... Yeah, <laughs> by com <laughs> by comparison with Donald Trump, is is that, is that what you mean? Don't be rude. Yeah, exactly. Well, yes, it's just such a surprise to hear. I mean, I'm Biden's intelligent, but of course he couldn't get it out, really. No. But there she is, you know, and you think, blimey, someone who can speak. Yeah, which is why Donald Trump is running away. Bravely yes. running away, like a scaredy little cat that he is. Yes, I mean, it's just pathetic, and, and that... Vance person, why can't he have a name like the rest of us? J.D. <laughs> yeah. Jesus. Yeah, like he's, like he's a DJ or he's a member of the Eagles or something. Oh, God, yes. And, you know, when... I mean, he is properly weird. Do Donald Trump is, is just weird for money, but J.D. Vance, uh, there, there seems to be... The, the, well, the money part is right up there. You know, the money and the power, of course, because he's completely changed his mind, his mind about who Donald Trump is. One time he thought he was America's Hitler. He actually did use that phrase, Donald Trump is America's Hitler. Yeah, or, he, or he said he might be. Uh, and now, now, of course, he's in Lerv, L-U-V, uh, oh, with uh, the, uh, the screaming Mimi. But the stuff that he comes out with is just, yes. it's, it's just next level sort of medieval weird. It's like yes. he, people with children should have their votes count more than people who don't have children. In other words, you should be able to vote, what, twice? Maybe three, three times? Well, because you have, uh, you know, you, you have, um, uh, I'm trying to think of another phrase, but skin in the game, because that's an Americanism, but I yeah, can't, I can't come up with it. Yeah, I hate it too. Yeah. You have um, an investment in the future if you have children. As, but everybody yeah. has an investment in the future because they yeah. plan on living in it. 
Yes, and they might have nieces things. Yeah. And I, it, it just sounds like a, a schoolboy to me. I thought, why are we giving them, him any credence at all? Why on earth are we discussing what this man says? And I think and it's the, the reason that he is um, important in the scheme of things is that it's not him, it's the people who are behind him. Oh. And, and the people who are behind him are essentially the people that gave us Donald Trump in the first place and people that gave us, um, I oh. suspect, Brexit and uh, the Tory party for 14 dismal years. Oh, it's all the same people, you say? I believe that it is all the same people. Yeah. It's a small handful of stupendously rich. rich, amoral weirdos yeah. who are intent on... I mean, imagine being worth, say, a hundred billion pounds hmm. and you spend all of your day trying to figure out how not to pay taxes. Oh. Imagine the, the mindset yes. of that. It's just so weird. As yes. though taxes, yes. uh, as though they personally do not benefit from the payment of taxes. As though they don't benefit from the health service that they may not actually use themselves, but their workers do. The police, they may not require because they've got their own security. But oh, I they, thought of something. They require a, a, a well-ordered society in order to peddle their wares. Mm. What did you think of? Sorry, well, it, it's just, as you were describing this, mm. I thought it doesn't sound human. It, just, it sounds to me like, you know the whole of nature, like the lions and tigers and the, the top of the food chain? Yeah. It's basically... Me, me, me. It's I must survive and, well, actually procreate. Yeah. So I don't know if that comes... But it is that, isn't it? I must survive. And that's your description there. That is all they're focused on. So it's very sub... No, I don't But it's not that. survival, though. It's, it, it's, 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 it's more than survival. It's, it's... Donald Trump said this once. He said, I, I only feel like I've won if everybody else loses. So that's a deal to him. Yeah, a good deal yeah. to him is he wins and everybody else loses. There is no deal by which he would be happy if he made it and you, you both come out a winner because uh, there's a part of the deal that he didn't get, he would think. Yeah. And that's exactly what they're like. It's, it's as though because they they have lucked into a fortune they and only they should have riches and everybody else should be, what? I don't know, slaves or exterminated with great prejudice. Affirmative. <laughs> it's just hard to know what their thinking is. If there was another planet that was habitable yeah. and that was uh, lovelier than the one we've got, they'd build a big, beautiful wall around it and go and live on it themselves. Yes, as if they're so, so top of the food chain type thing. I don't know, I still keep seeing it like that because it is complete madness, isn't it? It is, to, to be so human. rich and powerful, but to, to only ever be concerned with getting more riches and more powers is, is just beyond belief, really. I, I, I don't know, I cannot conceive of how these people think. They're, they're, it's almost like they're not actually human beings. No, exactly. They're, they're, That's what they're I cartoon villains, essentially. Yes. They're, they're like James Bond villains, like Blofeld is what we're dealing with here. Oh, I thought of something else. Some, somebody did want to say to me ages ago about... T Trump and his type completely different way of looking at it in a way he went right back to the start and said that he's so damaged from so early of deprivation of whatever you know love whatever yeah. that he can never ever get enough of anything and that did fit to an extent to me, in my mind yeah so well he's, he spent his entire life trying to get uh, his uh, daddy to uh, more more. to appreciate him and he keeps screwing up all the time and daddy had to keep bailing him out all the time and the embarrassment is that he, the only successful thing he's ever done is pretend to be a successful businessman on television on a game show oh it's like a constant hunger yeah, but this and that's week. Pouting. That's oh, pouting he I does. know. Yeah. You know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, his little spoilt boy um, look of, like, like he's just been slapped. Oh, don't. You'll make me feel sorry for him. <laughs> but, this, but since uh, Joe Biden left the race, it, it's, it's almost as though we've had a double 
a, a blanket taken off all of us for the, for the Labour Party thrashing the uh, the Tories yes. the last election. Yes. And, yes. Uh, and now Joe Biden out of the race and somebody you can uh, actually... You can um, rely on being able to string a sentence together yes. and to refute anything that comes out of Donald, Donald Trump's uh, mouth. And it's, it's almost like, OK, so it's not a done deal. A, yes. a week is a long time in politics. And just because he got... He got a tiny cut that didn't require stitches from a fragment of uh, a lectern or whatever it was that hit him in the ear. And then he he had the presence of mind and the showmanship. I mean, you have to give him credit for that part alone. Yeah, showmanship. He wanted, he wanted mm. to get the photograph in. And so he had a tiny little trickle of blood in his face. And he, mm. But he got up off the mm. floor and he lost his shoes. He, he also <laughs> was intent, determined to get his shoes back for some bizarre reason. I think they had lifts in them or... Something oh. like well, I don't know, or, or maybe they had uh, like arch supports or something like that. Um, but anyway, he was weirdly concerned about his shoes. I, I would be more concerned about getting off the stage, but I guess that's just me. You know, if, if bullets are zipping around me and people are actually yes. dying, I'd be a little more concerned about getting off the stage. But uh, he, he just wanted that photograph, that heroic photograph. Yeah. And whoever took that photograph, absolute genius. Because he's got the American flag in the background, he's got that perfect yeah. diagonal of him and the uh, Secret Service people, and a little bit of blood, and he's pumping the air. And It was what, one of the greatest uh, news photographs of the year. So uh, whoever took that is going to win all of the prizes going <sighs> for journalist photography this year. And I thought, in that moment, that's it, game's over, he's won the election. Um, and then uh, Joe Biden stepped down, and I thought, well, you know what? I don't think he has. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it, that was beautifully... I almost felt like punching the air myself. ...described, yes, yes, you can almost breathe. Yeah, exactly, you? yeah. Oxygen uh, entered the room. Yes. Yeah. Oh, by the way, I hope you've got my card. You may not have got it yet. Oh, mm. no, I didn't. Ah, oh, well, it's sort of quite a big one. Is it? I think you might like it, yeah. Oh, well, thanks for that, Rose. Oh, uh, you're all right. <laughs> I'll, I'll look for it later. Oh, good. It's great to have you here. All right, well, I appreciate that. <laughs> Cheers, my dear. Cheers. 0345 6060 973. Friday, Saturday, Sunday night at 10. Nick Abbott, LBC. LBC. Nick Abbott on LBC. Call 0345 6060 973. I just want to tell you all how happy I am to be back in the studio, making a picture again. Yeah, it's a radio show, dear, but I am happy to be back in the studio, no, no doubt about it. Dominic texts, the worst opening ceremony ever, more like a village fete. <laughs> really? It was pouring down with rain, wasn't it? I only saw the first half an hour. Uh, I saw up to the point where uh, that... Oh, so annoying. Why do they get her to do these things? I mean, you don't hear from... Uh, I can't remember what her name is. It's like the Scottish woman. And they wheel her out for these uh, kind of events every single time, the BBC. And she, it seems as though she takes it upon herself to ruin everything that she's commentating on. She, th she thinks she's um, a, a comedian, apart from anything else. Every single attempted attempt at a joke falls absolutely flat as a pancake. And she spoils the surprises all the time. She just can't help herself. And um, although it wasn't uh, particularly great, it was the most interesting thing I saw before I turned it off and had to come to work. And it was uh, that uh, bit with um, the uh, the sort of can-can dancers with the f fluffy, I don't know what you call those, shields made of pink fluffy stuff, behind which was a personage. And this uh, a Scottish woman commentator said, uh, and this, uh, uh, this person's going to make everyone go gaga. Of course, it was Lady Blooming Gaga, wasn't it? Thereby, she spoiled the surprise. Now, OK, I wouldn't have been off my chair, exactly, but why, why, why do that? Why spoil the surprise? It's supposed to be a blooming surprise. She's uh, behind all these um, fluffy shields. I don't know what you would call them. Like pom-poms, I guess. And the big reveal was, uh, here's Lady Gaga, but she spoiled it for us ahead of time for our convenience. Thank you. Yeah, appreciate it. I, I, and it's as though they don't use her for any other event. Maybe, maybe they do. Maybe I just don't watch um, a lot of uh, alternative sports on the BBC. I watch Grand uh, Match of the Day, and that's about it. Grandstand? <laughs> that's not a thing anymore. Match of the Day is what I watch. And she ain't on that. But uh, just infuriating. And um, 
Yeah, but about half, a half an hour in, I, I had to uh, leave. Did it not get any better than that? It, it must have done, didn't it? It did make me think, wow, you know, the, the, the British opening ceremony was uh, pro probably one of the best shows I've ever seen. And I do remember the first time I saw it, when, um, when I was sitting here, in this very seat, I think, what, looking at a tiny screen that was screwed to the ceiling. So I was craning my neck to look at a really small, not like uh, the screens that I'm surrounded by now, not like these giant flat screen things. It was just an ordinary television, which is about 10 inches across. And I, I looked at it through that just before I went on the air, and I thought it was one of the worst things I'd ever seen in my life. It was just deeply embarrassing. And then I went home and I watched it and uh, thought, oh, okay, I'm, I, I, I need to give an apology, which I did uh, profusely. I am very sorry that I screwed up. I said. Totally screwed. I mean, I am so sorry. You just don't know how sorry I am. I am sorry. Yeah, and I took it all back, and uh, it was one of the, the best shows I've ever seen, actually, the British opening ceremony. But the French one didn't, <laughs> didn't seem like very much. Maybe it got better. I don't know. Uh, 0345 6060 973 South Kensington, Leonard Oh, good evening, Nick Leonard And you're not brutalising Trump enough this evening <laughs> Dear, oh dear <laughs> Oh, poor baby um, You know, I have to say, I mean I think uh, I think Trump is almost certainly going to, 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 to be the next president of the States And the reason being, of course, is that a lot of people are convinced that if he isn't going to be the president, then we may be, you know, there may be a big, well, a strong possibility of a, uh, going into a, a world war. <laughs> world war? I, I, think, I think people genuinely a, believe a that. A world war with who? Well, I, I, suppose, I suppose Russia and... and, no. and, and, Donald, and, Trump, and Donald, Trump is, and, Donald Trump is a friend to Vladimir Putin, a close personal friend, a weirdly close personal friend. It's, it's, it's really bizarre how um, the, uh, the right wing in this country and in America are so close to Vladimir Putin. Why on earth might that be, I wonder? Well, I suppose it's got something to do with money. Uh, yep, there you go. Bingo. Got it in one. But I mean, I, mean, it, <laughs> I, d I don't know. I mean, I'm, I've been reading stuff about people claiming that it's staged. Even a load of Americans think it, you know, it's all staged. Uh, which bit? With the, you know, with the attempted assassination. Oh, well, th week. yeah, th those um, conspiracy theories took about two seconds to uh, pour all over the internet. Of course they thought it was staged, because the picture was so good. Yeah, dear, oh dear. But I, 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 I think he will, I think he will win. I but think you, you're win saying again. you think that he'll win, because if he doesn't, then his fans will take to the streets and start uh, shooting other Americans. Is that, is that what you mean? Well, they they do that already. Well, they do. They, yeah, they don't need. They don't need. It doesn't. I mean, I I remember being in America before Trump. Well, just before he became president the first time, and it was almost like a, a very strange. Well, in the airport, especially there were these kind of like um, I suppose they they they're called border police or something, and they were kind yeah. of like waving Trump supporters, you know, and they were kind of <laughs> insulting everybody in the airport. Which airport was this? Florida. In the states, I can't say where. I don't, I Why don't not? To, but I mean, well, I'd rather not. But Why I mean, not? The, the, well, do you have well, shares in the airport? They might remember who I am. You know, they're not going <laughs> to remember who you are. It was but, in Florida, right? Miami. No, it wasn't Florida. Texas. Not. No, you would have thought I'm, maybe. I'm getting Texas nearer. Is very laid back. Nevada. You know? No. No, I only met Mr. I only met Mr. Spock in Nevada once. Yeah. You met Mr. Spock? In Nevada, yeah. Leonard Nimoy, I met him in 1989. I remember being there. I was in a, in the, in, in near Reno. It was a town near Reno. He pulled up in some big old Zuzu and got out. And I, I said to him, well, that's not the Enterprise, is it? And he thought that was really hilarious. Yeah, I he bet he didn't. Stop laughing. He I, couldn't stop laughing. Yeah, I, I, totally I, I bet he didn't, Leonard. <laughs> he did. He did yeah, he I, I'm deciding not to believe anything you just said. 
But uh, apart from the the border police, I, I I do believe the border police were uh, probably uh, you know not on oh, their best were, behavior. They were they were they were yeah particularly you're as, foreigners. You don't have any right. Yeah, and as, I said, well, you obviously know nothing about the constitution. I I actually said that to them. And right, they, they okay. Weren't, they weren't, they weren't, you know what? I'm I'm not believing a single. Th- I've decided to well, change my mind uh, as far as you're concerned, Leonard. I, I've decided not to believe anything that you've said. Going right back to the beginning of our conversation, which seemed to have started what like three four hours ago. I'm th- I'm going to call uh, that a fake news call. Anyway, good effort, Leonard. Better luck next time. He is right about one thing, though. There's a lot of people who think that uh, Donald Trump had better win because uh, otherwise his fans are going to go nuts. Well, <laughs> too late. <laughs> that ship sailed. <laughs> his fans had already gone nuts. <laughs> but uh, w- w- what a... Uh, what a time to be alive. Well, we better just hand over the reins of the world's most powerful country to a man because his m- most demented fans want it more than life itself. Oh, okay then. Sure, why not? That makes sense. What's extraordinary is that, um, as in this country, the left wing keep winning the most votes but keep losing. If you take away the last general election in this country, for most of the time since the Second World War, the left wing have, er, have gathered more votes than the right wing. And the, but the Tories just kept winning over and over and over again. And in America, Hillary got more votes than uh, Donald Trump. And, um, and she lost anyway. It's because of uh, both their and our screwed up voting system. Still, every now and again, uh, we uh, we get a result. And that's what we're living through now. And Rose was right. It is like a breath of fresh air. It's, it is, uh, it's almost like the, uh, the shackles have been taken off. Oh, it's like somebody opened the window. <laughs> they opened the window in the fetid narcoleptic fart factory. <laughs> If I hear a funnier phrase this year, I'll be amazed. 0345 6060 973, Friday, Saturday, Sunday night at 10, Nick Abbott, LBC. On your radio, on Global Player, and. Play LBC. Leading Britain's conversation. This is LBC. This is LBC from Global. Leading Britain's conversation with Nick Abbott. You're joking. What number are you calling from? 0345 6060 973. Tony says, have you, seen the, uh, have you seen that Stop the Boats is trending on Twitter? Who'd have thought it? All Rishi needed to do was uh, to get his message out there and uh, for the world's greatest athlete... Shall I read that again? No. <laughs> Tony says, have you seen Stop the Boats is trending on Twitter? Who'd have thought it? All Rishi needed to do was... Uh, all Rishi needed to do to get his message out there is to out the world. See, it's not me, it's him. Paul says, isn't it nice to see an actual UK Prime Minister being warmly welcomed on the world stage? He got a hug off President Macron today, a long way from Truss and her it remains to be seen if France is an ally by all. That is a disgrace. <laughs> <laughs> you know, there's some Tories that pop up on your TV screen every now and again or on uh, social media. And my immediate reaction is, are you still talking? Liz Truss being prime among them. Liz Truss, are you still talking? You have delighted us enough. Thank you. Appreciate it. Don't feel compelled to speak any further on any subject. And she was on, um, uh, and a lot of the, uh, the of our chief grifters have gone to America to uh, see if they can't uh, shovel some of that money into their pockets. 
and um, she went to America and appeared on uh, Fox News and was going on about uh, how Kamala Harris is uh, unsuitable to be the leader of a country. <laughs> Liz Truss is an expert on suitability to lead countries. <laughs> I mean, you have got to be kidding me. I posted this on Twitter and I'm, I'm going to repeat myself. Liz Truss looks like a shop window mannequin that's been mounted on a robot vacuum cleaner. 0345 6060 973. East Yorkshire. Hello, Mike. Hi, Nicky. Yeah, glad to get you back. Thanks. Um, yeah, um, British politics for a change. Um, have you noticed how bouncy Sunak's been since the responsibilities come off his shoulder? He's, he almost looks normal. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's not get carried away. He's not touchy, he's not snappy, he's sort of. He smiles occasionally and um, what have you. Yeah. But of course, they salted the air. And the Labour Party are going to pick up all these problems, mm -hmm. like the CQC and um, the latest report on that. And I know. It, yeah, I'll, I'll sum that up for you, <laughs> is what the latest report on the Care Quality Co Commission is uh, saying. Yeah, basically, we're, <laughs> we're basically screwed. But, but going on other issues, I mean, the Reform Party... I mean, 30p Lee and Tice have made absolute oh. idiots of themselves. They do. And it, all you need to do is put a microphone in front of them and they tell you who they are. Believe them when they first tell you. But why do people keep putting microphones in front of them? I mean, what's the weather like today? I don't know. What does Nigel Farage think? I mean, yeah, but I mean, this business that the, the policeman in Manchester deserved a medal. Oh. Well, I mean, for God's sake. The, but what do you think he was going to say? I mean, that's just him all over. That's, that's the brand isn't it? It is, but surely people will eventually, the penny will drop. Well, no, yeah. the, but people love that. There's a certain number of people who love that, and it's always been the same percentage, more or less. It's about 12% of the British population who just love all of that stuff. They want to go back to the 1970s, or rather, they want to live today and be able to talk like they did in the 1970s. They want um, to, you know, have the freedom to uh, call the spade a spade, for instance. For example... Yeah. Literally, yeah. Yeah. BMP style. But um yeah, I mean I mean what they'll do next is they'll bring up um, Rochdale and say, Ah yeah, but uh, yeah. look what happened in Rochdale right. and go off down that horrible road. But anyway, I was wanting your opinion on the um on our election, the one that ends three days before the American election. Our election? Yeah, the Conservative Party leadership. Oh, <laughs> the runners and riders what oh, do you make of them God. I, well I I would hope that they would um, uh, get um, somebody appalling like Kemi Badnock or Pretty Patel or Suella Bradman perhaps one of those three I double dare them to do it yeah well it's good because you've got Honest Bob I mean he's one there yeah. and then you've got Pretty Patel the bully um, can be bad knock, but oh. the one that worries me in some respects most, well, is two. Cleverly, because he looks down the barrel of the camera and lies, and then he's told, told that he's lying, yeah. and he says, I don't recognise your figures, um, <laughs> and lies again. Yeah, that's right. And then, and then he, he says, I, I have alternative facts, yeah. and repeats the lie again. He, he learns at the feet of the master. Yeah, 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 where, 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 where <laughs> do we go? <yeah. laughs> But Mel Stride, I worry about Mel Stride because he is extremely devious. He comes across very credible, but he does the same thing. He slides round facts and introduces yeah. facts that aren't relevant to the argument. Have you noticed he, how different it is um, that you know since since the election we're being talked to as though we are actually grown ups and not uh, the, and, and politicians from the Labour Party don't talk to you as though they are statistical generating machines. And, and I was listening to something uh, tonight coming in, and the the Labour Party spokesperson was saying, you know, it was this and that, and they were talking to us in, uh, in in words and complete sentences. And then the Tory came on, and it was all just numbers. It was well, it was uh, you know, it was eighty six percent better off when uh, the Conservatives were in power, which was uh, forty two billion uh, less than the previous uh, thirty six percent. And and it was just okay. You've, you're either just making this stuff up on the spot which is very difficult to refute because it's difficult to put the opposite point to something that you're hearing for the first time, particularly if it's not true. You need to go away and 
determine that it's not true, and then you can have an opinion on it. But if somebody says that, well, it's uh, verifiably uh, true that we are 36% uh, better off uh, now than we were uh, 12 uh, years ago, and you, you don't know that that's not true because they just made it up, which is Donald no. Trump's trick. It's just this stream of uh, misinformation and lies uh, which will take you weeks to refute because none of it's true. But by the time you've uh, left the studio, the uh, the interview is over and uh, people have taken on board what they've heard, which is just a tower of lies. But the Tories are still doing it. It's all they've got. They just, they just learn by rote, off a script. These are the statistics that you must read out. It's th this amount of money and that amount of percentage and, um, and et cetera and so on. And, um, and they're still doing it. They, they did it in power. Every single one of them. Uh, Chris Philp, I am looking at you, but he's, he wasn't the only uh, one. They were all like it. And they're still doing it now, as though nothing has changed. No, and the problem with politics is, is that democracy can't survive in complete dishonesty. And I actually want a strong tell the opposition telling the truth and being honest. Yeah. That's healthy for British democracy. And we haven't got it. I can't see any of them. I mean, Phil... Thank God hasn't um, put himself forward yet, but um, that would be the real killer. But, but none of the candidates at the moment are what you would call honest people. No. And and this it does not bode well for British politics. I mean, well, I, but one uh, thing, assu assuming that they don't get into power, they don't really matter. No, no. Well, I mean, it, I, it, I would it, suggest it, that the three that I mentioned would 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 solidify their uh, period in opposition because people just aren't going to ordinary people aren't going to vote for any of them. No, I mean, people seem to have well, people have sense in general, and after a while, it get, it becomes obvious that they're being conned. But one, one of the old Tories, I can't remember who it was now, where it says all the time, somebody said, hmm. the next Tory Prime Minister is not yet an MP. Oh. And I thought, that is probably one of the most sensible things that I've heard <laughs> for, for quite a while. That none of them that are there are trustworthy enough or honest enough hmm. to displace Labour. In well, the next election, and yeah. maybe the one after that. I would encourage them to uh, choose uh, the, the three that I particularly uh, mentioned because um, th they, they are just not popular people and, and they are positively repelling as, um, as politicians. I mean, you, you actively want to, cr to cringe away from them as they speak. Did you see that speech that Kemi Badnock gave in the House when she was uh, trying to um, uh, be all superior about Angela Rayner? Oh. Yeah. God, it was absolutely yeah. toe curlingly awful, and and just uh, really did remind you, in case you'd forgotten over the last two weeks, what they are all about. And it's superior. It's supercilious. It it's like a distilled essence of this bloke. You're better informed than I am. I don't know anything. Him. That's <laughs> exactly who they are. It's like oh, we're 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 born to lead. Don't you understand? That's the attitude. Yeah, and it's, it persists, and I can't see much change coming. No. And it, I don't think it, hopefully it won't do them any good, but um, I don't know. We'll, um, we'll watch both elections. I think it could be a bit of a bloodbath, because the time is not to attack <laughs> each other. And I cannot see them going through this without attacking each no. other. Yeah. I think there'll be, there'll be blood spills. It will tear the party apart, and each of them will end up with their own little factions. And Well, I'll tell you what, Mike. You, you pull up the chair, and I'll bring the popcorn. How does that sound? <laughs> <laughs> Thanks a lot, mate. 0345 6060 973 LBC. This is LBC. Leading Britain's conversation. Nick Abbott. Alexa, send a comment to LBC. Hello, boys. Basil says the Met Office said that last Friday was the hottest day of the year. Now they're saying that, Sat that uh, Sunday will be the hottest day of the year. They need to make their mind up. <laughs> Yeah, that's right. They should decide at the beginning of the year which is going to be the hottest day and then just stick with it. Quite right. Cumbria. Hello, Terry. Hi, Nick. How are you doing? Yeah, all right, thanks. You all right? Nice to speak to you, by the way. Um, yeah, I mean, come on. Uh, like, American politics, uh, it's kind of like, it's out there, isn't it? Do you not think? It's what? It's out there. Out there. 
Yeah, I mean, when you watch it, it's kind of like, I don't know, it's different, isn't it? Like American as opposed to like, kind of like UK politics. Well, it's like everything in America is different. It's it's bigger and louder and more colourful. Exactly, yeah. Do you know I think that makes it fake? It makes it fake? Um, well, our, yeah, our politics is, is fake. I mean, Prime Minister's Questions is a festival of fakery, for instance. I mean, that's our most showbiz moment of the political week, Prime Minister's Questions, and, and none of those people mean it. And they're all yelling at each other, and then they go off to the bar together, and uh, they're all uh, chummy, and they pat each other off on the back, and they buy each other rounds. It's all fake. I think, <clears throat> sorry, I think Prime Minister's Question Time is a good idea, though, isn't it? Like, to have, like, the, the Prime Minister, like, the leader, like, kind of hold through the calls, like, every every single week, you know? I, well, I think you got it right when you said idea. It's a good idea, but in practice, it doesn't really achieve anything. Well, they know what's coming, don't they? So they can sort of, like, yeah. prepare for it. It's probably part of the course, uh, as being, like, a leader. But the rest, the rest of the time, the, uh, the chamber is almost completely empty, and, uh, the, you know, the one or two people in there are standing on their feet and speaking to um, uh, rows of empty seats. See, there's no equivalent in American politics of that, though, is there? Um, no, there isn't. I mean, our, the, the way we have our system set up, I think Churchill insisted on there being too few seats... There was, there was the one uh, MP was talking about this about how badly the whole system works because there isn't anywhere to sit and you got that silly standing in the lobbies before you uh, say yay or nay and it's just a bunch of nonsense. It's, it's a bunch of nonsense. Uh, people in wigs and buckles on their shoes. You know, it's just this obsession with with, with sticking with historical um, yeah. uh, I, ar artifacts and traditions. Yeah, it's just daft. Um, you know the speaker. Like, I, 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 like, I like how they face each other. Though. It's like I think they call it like adversarial. Yeah. Don't it? But I, I, it doesn't really. I, I don't think that it's uh, a good way of running a government. I mean, why, why, how, how does the shouting help? For instance. I know. No, that's a joke, isn't it? I always actually like remember Smith and Image. Yeah. They'd have them like both sides, like two football teams, and one side would be, wa be waving red flags, and the other side would be mm. waving blue flags. You yeah, know, that's pretty much. Well, I think it is. Uh, but I think it is that 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 is just like. I think it was a good idea, uh, but then it just becomes like it's part of the course for them. Uh, they go, oh, where they? It's like the the prime minister just thinks, well, it's okay. Like I'm going to get this flack every week. I think that you the, know? I think it's probably that the the, uh, the in, system uh, may have worked better when a there was fewer of them, and b they were a different type of people. There weren't these braying. I mean, I'm assuming that some of them are drunk. I know that it's quite early in the morning, but they are acting like they're drunk. So it, yeah. it wasn't a, a room <laughs> full of braying uh, hooligan drunks, which is quite a lot of what we get at the moment. So I think that the the room was set up in a different era when people didn't behave like that. Yeah, and uh, you know, but the, how many bars are in the? Uh, houses of Parliament. Plenty. They've got bars, haven't they? They've got plenty, yeah. Subsidised ones as well. That's yeah, correct. That's right, isn't it? Yeah. 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 <laughs> Not just bars, restaurants too. But like, just talking about with the comparison with America though, I mean, I think America's like, I don't know, it's too showbiz, huh? I kind of, do you know when you watch like, um, I, I don't know, I don't know what, it's kind of like entertainment or something. Uh, like, I just imagine like, they say, oh, we need to like go on TV and like, Maybe not so much now with the internet and stuff, uh, but like they want a presence and like a, an image and like they, they. Do you know what I mean? Like, well, you're just talking about Donald Trump. I mean, the, the rest of them, I mean, the rest of American politicking is just as boring as ours is. Um, perhaps even less well informed than ours is because some of the numpties that get elected to uh, to the two houses in America, you just. Uh, just astonishing, really. But it's like it's like with um, do you know, it's Kamala Harris and stuff like that. Like it, it seems like they go for like um, you know, social media and stuff like that, and they're obsessed with what, what young people think about them. Well, yeah, that's know? because young people are going to be uh, living um, <laughs> longer yeah. than old people, and it's like, it's will like have more opportunities to vote. TikTok, isn't it? Yeah, well, that's uh, you know, that, that's about yeah, TikTok. yeah, yeah. That's that's not politicians. It, that's their staffers who run the social media accounts. I mean, the, the one politician who I do think um, 
Hang on, I'm going to cough. The one politician who I think does run his own social media is, is Donald Trump, because it's all in capital letters. And, um, hang on. One moment, please. It's all in capital letters, and, uh, you know, you can tell his demented style. But just like you're talking about Trump, by the way, do you know how you're saying about, like, do you know the, like, assassination and stuff like that? Uh, well, attempted assassination. Yeah. And how you say, how you saying it wasn't, like, a bullet. Uh, um, what I always thought, do you know when that happened? Hmm. Do you know, like, a bullet, uh, like, if a bullet grazed his ear, I always thought a bullet travelled faster than the speed of sound, uh, and so, like, if a bullet just misses you, it would knock you out, uh. Yeah, I don't believe it for a second that he was hit by uh, a bullet. And the, the 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 journalist from the inside, the American journalist that I was talking to at the time, said he had the word from his sources at the scene, and a, yeah, and by which I think he meant the Secret Service, although he, he wouldn't tell me yeah, exactly yeah. what. So maybe it was just other politicians who were there. He said it was just a bit of glass that came off the teleprompter that nicked Donald Trump on the ear. If it was a bullet, his ear would not be in the perfect state that it is today. Because there was a picture of no. him when he met uh, yeah. Netanyahu, and there he is with, with that, without that uh, silly pillow of plaster on his ear, and there's absolutely nothing wrong with it. I oh, that was kind of like an image thing, huh? going back to, like, you know, the look and stuff like that. But yeah. do you know what I mean? Like, well, it, it, makes him like... it makes him seem braver than if it was just a piece of glass um, yeah. that, uh, that nicked him on the ear. Yeah. But, like, but like a bullet, though, like, if a bullet, ju like, was close enough to, like, graze your ear, it would have knocked you out because it's, like, supersonic, isn't it? Uh, a bullet, yeah. like travels at the speed of sound, like well, it was like un unless, you know, like, unless you're of, a big, unless you're a big, tough, strong man like uh, Donald Trump. <laughs> no, but I'm sure, like I heard this on like some kind of documentary about, like mm. you know, like when ships used to fire cannonballs. Yeah. Like if if you were standing there and a cannonball just missed you by like a foot, the kind of sonic, like because it was traveling really, really fast. Yeah. It would compress the air, and and that would be like hitting you. It would knock you out, you know what I mean? Well, the, uh, so, the like, stuff you learn on this show, it's an education, no? No. <laughs> yeah, no. <laughs> That's no, excellent no, work there, Chad. As, yeah, as, as, uh, yeah, as soon as you find out uh, anything further, I want you to let me know straight away. Promise me you'll do that. Will do, Nick. Okay, excellent. Excellent work, that man. Yeah, he's, uh, and uh, Donald Trump is furious, by the way, about that whole bullet issue. Donald Trump has slammed the FBI as the agency confirmed it is probing whether he was actually hit by a bullet during an assassination attempt. Uh, the theory is that the tiny trickle of red in his face was not blood at all, but was from the ketchup on a chicken wing that he'd put behind his ear to eat later. The powder puff presidential hopeful blasted the FBI's director, Christopher Wray, after he suggested that it could have been shrapnel which grazed Trump's ear following the shooting in Pennsylvania, which upset the screaming Mimi because being hit by a tiny piece of shrapnel that gave him a cut that didn't even require stitches doesn't sound as manly as surviving an assassin's bullet. He got a cut that most men would put a piece of toilet paper on if they did it shaving, and he's coming across like he's John Wayne and Clint Eastwood combined. That's a bang up to date reference for you millennials, by the way. John Wayne and Clint Eastwood. <laughs> Clint Eastwood didn't have superpowers. And John Wayne didn't have claws in his hands, and neither of them could fly. So the kids would not be interested. Correct. The New York Times reported that the FBI was hoping to interview Trump as part of its investigation. But Donnie is having a fit that you could see through concrete, and he's sitting in a corner of his room and he won't come out. It's the brave thing to do. He wrote on social media, FBI Director Christopher Wray told Congress yesterday that he wasn't sure if I was hit by shrapnel, glass, or a bullet. No, it was, unfortunately, a bullet that hit my ear and hit it hard. <laughs> there was no glass, there was no shrapnel. He said, nobody knows more about shrapnel than me, believe me. He said, Secret Service detail thought it was over when I went down because a lot of blood was coming after my ear was grazed, said Donald Trump. No, not a lot, the tiniest amount. Most people have worse of that than uh, that from a paper cut. He said, I'm supposed to be dead. 
the most incredible thing was that I happened to not only turn, but turn at the exact right time and in just the right amount, he said. I survived by luck or by God. Well, I'm no expert, but I think I can rule God out. God hasn't lifted a finger to save tens of thousands of children dying in Gaza. God didn't rouse himself to stop the Holocaust. So unless Donny has made some sort of deal with the fella from the other place, I seriously doubt there was divine intervention. Oh. But I'm no expert. 0345 6060 973. Merthyr Tidfil. Hello, Jeff. Well, Nick, good to hear from you, boy. We're worried about you. Yeah, well, I was worried about me. Gosh. Good to see you. Good to see you back in the saddle, old boy. Well, thanks. Um, the, uh, you know, as you know, I like to keep you up to scratch about things that are happening. In yes. The world. So, what's the latest? Well, uh, Vaughan Gettins resigned, mm -hmm. uh, as you know, and he, he, there's uh, been a coronation, and the new first minister is going to be a lady called Lynyrd Morgan. Oh yeah, she she's um, she's a long time, long serving ex health minister in Wales. Mm -hmm. Anyway, um, the rumours have it in the Senate that one of the first acts that she's going to do is change uh, certain things. She's recently lost her license for speeding. She went, you know, the three, <laughs> the, the three, um, the three hits, and you're out. Right. Job. Well, how fast and, was she going? Presumably in well, a twenty mile an hour zone, oh, right? We don't know. We don't oh, know. Okay. But the rumor, the rumor in the Senate is yeah. that one of the first things she's going to do is change all of the twenty mile an hour <laughs> to seventy. Seventy. <laughs> um, uh, it's only a rumor. Yeah. But but the thing is that she's. Um, she, well, I did tell you on a number of occasions mm -hmm. he was going to go, Nick, if yeah. you remember. Um, I mean, you can't take £200,000 from a convicted dumper of toxic waste. Right. Um, I do recall that uh, Tony Soprano was in waste disposal. Absolutely. Oh, that's the wrong absolutely. That was George W. Bush. Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> So the end result of it all is that um, she's going to be the new first minister. Right. Um, and the other thing, I, I was passing for the plan. Mm -hmm. The profile is changing. It seems as if they're pushing it back in the hall. Oh, right. I, 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 I have no idea what, what is going on. So it's a giant mound of, what, slag? <laughs> is that what they call it? <laughs> no, it's just... It's just overburden. The technical term for it is overburden. You you dig it away, you get the coal out, right. you put it back in. You know what I mean? It's but there's going to be a big gap, uh, a, a materials gap, isn't there? Gonna, there's going to be oh. a depression there, surely. Yes, yes, there is. And they've got different ideas to do it. But um, it's going to cost a lot of money. Yeah. And you know, there's a big question mark about where the money is at the moment. But the, the, the whole effort. And finally, mm -hmm. I was listening to, do you know, um, uh, Ian Dale, right? Yes. Uh, I was listening to him. I, I've, uh, I've he, heard of him, yes. <laughs> <laughs> and, and he was talking, he was talking in a, in a very pleasant way mm -hmm. to our friend Malcolm from Bodmin. I don't oh, yeah. know if you remember him. Right. He's, he, and, I, and it occurred to me, was he the old man that Ian was having an altercation with on the pier at Brighton with his dog? I, I don't know if you recall that incident. I do, yeah. I find it huge. But why would you put the two together? Well, I don't know. There's something about Malcolm that uh, reminded me about the guy, you know, that right. was altercating. And I, I was just thinking whether or not he was... Well, yeah, leave it with me, Jeff, and um, I'll investigate further. How does that sound? Can you ask? Yeah, yeah definitely not. No. <laughs> right, but thanks for asking. Cheers, Jeff. 0345 6060 973. Text 84850. Email nickA at lbc.co.uk. If you're on Twitter, it's at LBC. Friday, Saturday, Sunday night at 10. Nick Abbott, LBC. It's 11.30. There is headlines with Tim Daly. Nick Abbott on LBC. Call 0345 6060 973.
Hello. Caroline says, it's finally feeling a bit warmer, but I'm not putting the woolies away just yet. Just in case. I can't remember a year in which I've uh, worn my um, thermal undercranks longer than in this year. I mean, I only took them off um, uh, last week, m momentarily, for a couple of days, and then I had put them back on again. I mean, is, is that just a function of being used to being baking hot in my thermal undercranks all the time? Or has it actually been quite cool? I th maybe a combination of the both. But, um, you know, if I wear them any longer, you're going to have to uh, take them off me with a uh, hammer and chisel. They're just going to be uh, melded into my body, become a part of me. Archie says, wouldn't it be spectacular if Trump gets beaten by a woman in the US presidential election? Yes, it would. Yeah, it would. It's as, as though uh, the human race has stared into the abyss and uh, has pulled back. Just a bit. I mean, they pulled back in France. They pulled back in this country. Now, if uh, America can completely triumvirate, then that would be epic. Oh. Because Donald Trump just seems, I don't know, he's just got the, the stink of old cheese about him now, doesn't he? Now that he is the uh, old, doddering uh, uh, codger in the race. There's just um, something of the uh, of the fetid about him, Donald Trump. He just or he just went from being the presumptive um, president, the presumptive uh, winner of the thing in uh, November after he got that uh, tiny piece of shrapnel that just slightly grazed his ear, and that heroic picture was taken of him with the American flag fluttering in the background. And I, and many people, I bet, saw that, uh, and uh, I said at the time, well, that's it, the, uh, the game is over, he's won. And then it all changed in a week. Just incredible. And it is like somebody opened the window and fresh air came in. And now we've got this uh, Kamala, pronounced Kamala. I'm never going to get used to that, because it looks like Kamala to me, but it's Kamala, apparently. Uh, we've got this uh, woman who I'm really sort of not on my uh, radar before, but the more I see about her, the more I like her. Now, they're going to... They're going to come after her because she laughs a lot. I mean, they've already tried to do that already. Cackling Kamala. You know, it's got to be alliterative. Because um, that's just Donald Trump's style. It's uh, pretty much all he's got. Insults. Um, and bullying, essentially. I mean, that's, that's his thing, isn't it? Ask anybody that's... Um, uh, ever work for him, what he's like. Well, y you don't really need to ask because all of the people that worked on his last campaign, none of them are working on this one. I don't think a single person who was working for him when he was the president is intending to do so again. I think they've all gone. Um, many of them are in jail, of course. I'm sure that's just a coincidence. Just a coincidence, Donnie, that everybody you work with is in jail. Don't be rude. Yeah. And uh, his, his excuse is, uh, well, uh, who? Who? Never, never even heard of them. I don't believe I've ever met him. I'm pretty sure I didn't meet him, and I just don't know anything about him. Just don't know anything about him. And then the press will uh, produce uh, 86,000 pictures of him with that person that he said he never met. It's just a coincidence. But it does seem as though the window has been opened, a little bit of uh, fresh air has uh, been blown through, and, uh, you know, we've, uh, we've got rid of... This government. Oh, finally. What sweet relief. And so, uh, you know, things are smelling better in this country, and things uh, uh, momentarily looked a bit uh, dicey in France, but the majority got their way. And if it can just happen the same way in uh, America, then the human race will have stared into the abyss, but, uh, but backed off just in time. It'd be a great result for us all. Thank goodness, oh. if not God. 0345 6060 Heston, Isaac. Hello, Nick. How are you? Great, well, mate. Welcome back. Thanks. Oh, it's, it's, it's good to have you back. Right. Two topics. Yeah. US, UK politics and US politics. Okay. But before... <laughs> But before that, I want to give a quick mention, right? Mm. On Monday morning, right, 
I tuned in to uh, James O'Brien, so I thought, you know, you, you know, get get the James O'Brien for an hour or two. Yeah. So I switched my TV on, mm-hmm. and it was Suella Braverman. What? And I go, ah! <laughs> 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 it's that is. And I, anyway, I was, I thought, what? And I, I thought to myself, Wow, James has changed. Yeah. Thought, of yeah. all the people in uh, all the world, yeah, who are you going to get to fill in uh, for James O'Brien? He he tweeted what uh, he tweeted for the picture of that announcement. Uh, he said, "What fresh hell is this?" <laughs> well, I, thought, I phoned up, right? I phoned up, okay, mm. and the and the first thing I said to the um um the, his uh well the, the, the producer, yeah. Uh, yeah, I said, I said. Where's James O'Brien? Where's James O'Brien? Yeah. And she goes, "Oh, sorry, Isaac. Uh, James on holiday uh, this week." Yeah. Yeah. And and before and before I started going on a rant, right? <laughs> she put the phone down on me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm thinking of doing anyway, the same myself. Carry on. Right. My two topics: UK politics. Yeah. Right. Um, well, all I can say right now, okay, the, uh, it's like. Um, it, Honestly, it's like it's so calm and grown up. The grown ups yeah. have entered the room. Have they just? It's, yes, and, and they've got a louder it, voice it, now than um, the, um, the, the the permanently aggrieved, which is the Conservative Party, who do still uh, get a lot of face time on TV and radio, and their act hasn't changed. They have not absolutely. heard the word at all. They just keep coming out with a pile of statistics. It's noise and numbers signifying oh, nothing. No. But they can't do um, anything else because that's all they've got. Exactly. And and I'm telling you, I mean, at the moment, it's uh, with Labour in and doing things in a grown-up, mature manner. Yeah. It's like, it, it is, a, for me, it's a zen-like spiritual experience. <laughs> I'm telling you. Yeah. It is, oh, I'm telling you, I... I watched Question Time, right, on uh, Wednesday, yeah. and oh, I'm telling you, I thought, this is zen. This is spiritual. It really, it's, is it's, what... it's remarkable to mm. to be spoken to as though the person who is doing the speaking and the, the us uh, poor dopes who are doing the listening, as though we're all adults, mm. as though we're grown-ups. And exactly. It is so refreshing. I mean, uh, and 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 to quickly close on UK politics, mm. right? I'm looking. Well, I say I'm looking forward to. I'm a bit worried, but I will tune in to uh, um, on Monday to, to to find out about um, the what uh, Rachel Reeves has found out, which is the twenty million twenty billion uh, pound black hole. I'm yeah. thinking, well, because because apparently she's doing an audit. You know, and she's going to have uh, the results on Monday. Mm. So, and the Tories I'm, I'm are already for... uh, putting their forward, uh, putting forward their case, saying that uh, every, anything she's about to say isn't true because the country is doing much, much better than you could possibly imagine, and uh, things have uh, never been more rosy than when the Conservatives uh, left the office. And the, no. the audience will right. receive that information with stunned surprise that these people are not just still speaking in that way, but that they're still Absolutely. speaking at all. Mm. Now, uh, U- U.S. politics, yeah. right? This uh, uh, this um, this nominee uh, vice president uh, J.D. Vance, oh, right? Him. Okay. All all I want to say to uh, the uh, you know the uh, people in the U.S.A. the voter in the U.S.A. Mm. is this two things. Number one. It's just a, it's just a, a distraction technique. What he said about um, what he said about Kamala Harris and people not having children. Yeah, right? obsessed with us. It's just it's just a distraction yeah. technique. Why distraction why is a guy who wears who, who appears why is a guy who appears to wear so much eyeliner so obsessed with how many children other people have had? What what is that about? Exactly, exactly. Yeah. Well, it's I tell you what he looks like. He technique. looks to me like. Um, like, like the guy that took over from Freddie Mercury in Queen. Oh, I see, right. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But what the American people need to worry about, this is what they need to focus on, okay? They're Kamala Harris and the American people mm. and, and the women, because she's got the women's vote, right? You would think they need so. To focus, yeah. Most of them, anyway. Absolutely. They need to focus on Project 
2025, mm. right? Now, now, if uh, the Republicans win, right, OK, the aim is, is to get Project 2025 USA done and dusted in the first 180 yeah. days, during which time... They need, to, they, they, need to do it at top, they need to do it at top speed, because it's essentially it's a, it, it will be a, a right. fast-moving coup. The, the plan is oh, to yeah. make it impossible Absolute. for them to lose the presidency ever again. Absolutely. It's Ameri the USA is going to become a dictatorship, basically. I, I believe that that's not too far off the truth, yeah. Yeah. And it's not Donald okay, Trump, well. and it's not J.D. Vance, it's the people behind them. It's a small handful of utterly weird billionaires who seem obsessed yes. with nothing other than gaining more money and more power. I mean, how much... Could, yes. If you've got hundreds of billions of pounds that is your own yes what yes. kind of How mental illness are you doing? suffering from that you are only concerned with acquiring more of it uh, absolutely correct i mean so america should fo so the american voter should focus on project 2025 yeah, I, you know what I, I, i'm not sure yeah i'm not sure well the, the last part yeah but I'm not sure the 2025 mm. thing is actually going to go over very well because it's too... Um, it, f f Trump's fans will love the idea because they actually want a dictator. I'm, I've seen uh, mm. journalists go out when uh, those uh, MAGA rallies and they'll ask them directly that question. Would you uh, prefer a, a Democrat or uh, a, a Democratic uh, president or would you rather be run by Russia, they'll ask. And uh, Russia is uh, their first uh, answer that... They'd rather, really, they'd rather Vladimir Putin run the country, and they'd uh, they'd rather be um, uh, dead than uh, which colour is which? <laughs> is it red? <laughs> they'd rather be uh, uh, you know they'd rather have a dictatorship under Donald Trump forever than uh, lose uh, the next Absolutely. election. It's, it's it's really really utterly bizarre what's going on over there. But it can be explained uh, very simply. They've joined a cult. It's a religious movement. It's a cult they have joined. And they have um, uh, assigned some sort of godly significance to Donald Trump, as though he has been uh, delivered by Jesus to save you. Donald Trump. I mean, just think about that for a second. With everything you know about that man. Mr. Uh, grab him by the wherever. Him. I can walk into a uh, Miss Teen USA pageant into the changing room and all, all these beautiful girls, they're all totally naked and I can do it because I, I own the pageant. Boasting about it. <laughs> People don't, don't even need to make it up. You just listen to what he has said about his own behaviour doesn't have a filter. He tells you who he is all the time. You just have to believe him. Anyway, Isaac, got to go. Thanks for that. 0345 6060 973. Now, the American people don't have to concentrate on uh, Project 2025 because it's too amorphous. It's too um, complicated an issue. It's basically that he wants to gut the entire government of anybody that has been put in their position, like a civil servant or somebody like that, that uh, but have been put in a position because of their expertise. So it's one of the first moves of a dictator, get rid of experts, which is uh, professors, teachers, you know, intellectuals, and uh, people who have the experience of uh, whatever department it is that they're helping to run. Get rid of all of those and just put um, Donald Trump nodding dogs in their place. And then you can capture every part of the American government, which means that you can actually, which is what he wanted to do last time, you can just add as many votes as you need to the tally to make you the winner next time around, because everybody that is in a department that would have oversight over that is your nodding dog, which is how Vladimir Putin wins so, so often. It's not because he's popular, it's because he's in charge of the counting of the votes. Uh, that's it uh, in uh, a nutshell. But I think that's too amorphous. It's too complicated an issue to think about. Just think about um, 
Gun control. Most Americans are for gun control. It's something like 57% want more gun control. And 12% want less. And the 12% are the ones with all the money, and they're the ones that get listened to. Just think about how many school children get taught what to do in the case that a shooter is wandering the corridors and picking them off. I mean, what a concept. And it's all of them in America. And the Republicans, whenever a shoot uh, school shooting happens, which is uh, at the rate of, I think last year it was 153 school shootings, 153 incidences of guns in schools, either being shot or like an active shooter or somebody waving it around and uh, threatening with it. It's 153. Just think, do you want your child to confidently go to school in the knowledge that they'll almost certainly be coming back? Or do you want to just be sitting at home crossing your fingers and hoping that somebody with an uh, AR-15 military assault weapon uh, with a history of being bullied doesn't want to take it out on everybody in that school that day? And then think about which party it is that wants to take the weapons out of their hands and to make those army assault weapons less easily available uh, compared to which party wants them to be more available. And base your decision on that. Simple. 0345 6060 973 LBC. LBC. This is LBC with Nick Abbott. He is a very sick and dangerous man. Yeah, you probably shouldn't come uh, anywhere near me. If you catch what I've got, then uh, big trouble, huge. I've uh, acquired the lurgy and I'm uh, trying to rid myself of it. But you know me, I never complain. Whinging and whining and moaning. You in text. Britain seems to have turned the corner. Really? If we have, then we're still on the same road with the same destination. Two child benefit caps still firmly in place and austerity here to stay. Yeah, well, the two child benefit cap is so hypocritical of, uh, of, conserv of um, politicians of any stripe. Because they, of course, get three child benefits. I think it's something of the order of five grand a year per child up to the number of three MPs have awarded themselves that benefit and yet they are insisting that everybody else should get uh, much, much less, two-thirds of what they get. You know, in much the same way as um, they pay a, a, a tiny fraction of the amount for food and drink that we pay. I've got detailed files about that. This is one of the things I was going to talk about um, a little while ago before I got sick and I couldn't speak anymore. But this will, um, just in fury, this will render me um, speechless. It's about the amount that they uh, pay in the House of Commons for food and, uh, and, and I was going to say water. But not water. <laughs> That's definitely not what they're on. Booze. More like it. Oldbury, Ranjit. Nick, yeah, you okay? Good, thanks. Yeah, you are still sounding a bit croaky, yeah. so I hope you get better soon. I Cheers. think you probably need to have a little bit of vitamin C oh, yeah. uh, to ward off uh, that kind of stuff, yeah. Okay, you know, uh, I was going to talk about um, um, Isaac actually stole my thunder a little bit. I wanted to desperately get on and speak to Corella Dalberman. Hmm on Monday, yeah, and I was going to call out, I was going to say, do you get offended when people call you Corella Dolberman, right? <laughs> but I just, <laughs> they wouldn't even answer my phone. Uh, yeah, you know? I, I wouldn't think so, no. <laughs> you know, well, I didn't know what I was going to say, I was going to ask her that. Yeah. You know what, all mm -hmm. through the show, she was fishing for uh, compliments, right? And you know what, every single, well, not every single, but most of the people, right, just shot her down, Right. I well, tell you now, what, she what, got, what do you mean she was fishing for compliments? She was trying to say, well, you know, while I was in government, uh, I did this, oh. I did that, right? right? And people were just saying, hang on, okay, stop. <laughs> so, this is exactly what you've done, and this is mm. how you exactly talk down to people. I think, you know, I got interrupted a couple of times, right? So I might have missed where somebody did probably compliment her, but all yeah. the ones I've seen were... You know, she she was quite brave to come on the air. Well, right? um, yes, I mean, but, particularly in that slot, because the, yeah. I would imagine that James O'Brien's listeners are not very sympathetic no, <laughs> to, no, to Cruella no. Braverman. It was... It was a totally the opposite. And she kept in saying, she goes, well, I hope James O'Brien's not listening or whatever, you know, yeah. because she knew she was the, totally on the other end of the spectrum. Mm. 
Right, and then. But just you know, for, as far as radio, as as far as radio goes. That was a pretty good signing, I thought. It was pretty... Um, because it c- created a lot of debate, not on the programme itself, but around the uh, programme. People were f- yeah. you know, generally freaking out. So I thought that was, mm. pre- I thought that was a pretty smart booking. It, it was a smart booking, yeah. I think it was uh, out of the people that covered, I think, you know, that was the best booking. And right. I, I wish I'd got on and, you know, and, and it, no yeah. holds barred no, conversations. No chance, Raj. As, as, as soon as they saw your number, it was... Warning, warning! <laughs> it, was, it was, it was, yeah. And, the, and then, obviously, Mike's been talking about, you know, the leadership election, yeah. 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 You know, all the people that have put their... Oh, by the way, I've got an auntie called Kumla. Oh, yeah. Like that's how it's pronounced her name, Kumla. Is it spelled uh, the same? Yes, yeah, spelled the same. It's an Indian name, right? right? Because it, it, it can be uh, short for Kamalji as well, yeah. Right. Kumla, right? So that's how they say it, right? But that's, it's up to them how they want, how they, them young well, I suppose do, so, but, yeah. You know, yeah. But that's what I heard. True. It was comma, as in the punctuation, followed by no. La. <laughs> <laughs> Which is very uh, counterintuitive because it's all A's. K A M A L A is yeah. is pronounced mm. O's. Kamala. Yeah. Oh, the, I mean, what's his name now? He's trying to get you know Donnie's trying to get her an angle on it so he can have a go at her, and I think she's going to be batting everything back towards him. Yeah. Yeah. Wh- whatever he says, she's got the answer. With that, Joe Biden, that whole race has been um, given an injection of um, fuel. It's uh, mm. from ha- but it, it seeming like a done deal that uh, Trump was just going to waddle into mm. the White House again. Now, I mm. I don't think he will. I don't think he will either. I think you know he's got a formidable uh, uh, opponent. And right? you'll be able to see the temper tantrum from space if he doesn't win the next election. It's going to be <laughs> hilarious. I, I'm, yeah. I'm 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 cancelling all my appointments in December just to keep laughing. <laughs> and the other thing, you know, this uh, Operation Twenty Twenty Five. Yeah. You know, Donny needs to really look. He's an old man, actually. You know what? If he does become become a dictator, how many years has he got in front of him? Well, you as, know? Uh, as 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 many as he can manage, because that's the nature <laughs> of being a dictator, isn't it? Yeah, but if he was if he was a younger man, then at least he's got four, you know, twenty yeah. or thirty years ahead of him. He hasn't. But and what's what's the, what's, oh, what's um, worrying is it's it's not even Donald Trump because I don't believe that Donald Trump uh, actually believes any of the, any of the things that he says. I mean, he, he's just doing this for money and power and uh, the glory and like the Rolling Stones, he just can't get off the stage and, and mm. uh, you know soaking up the approval. That's why he's doing this. I don't think that he is, you know, uh, is evangelical about any of the things that he pretends to be. He's not a religious man. He doesn't really oh, care no. about abortion or gun control or any of these things. I mean, he doesn't actually like guns. Um, his uh, record on um, abortion is uh, sketchy, to say the least. And um, he, 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 the, per, the person he's pretending to be is not who he is. But he just, the people he that are around him, term. but the people that are around him, they mm. believe it. Yeah, he just wants that second term. That's all he wants, right? You know, and 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 it's, it's like an infatuation for him. Well, right? he wants the second term to get back at all the people who have been, uh, yeah. you know, insulting and mm. mean to him. And he's on a revenge yeah. mission because that's who he is. Yeah, can I give you a prediction on the uh, conservative election? Right, go on. Then. Yeah. You know what? They're going to go through the same cycle as they went through after 1997. You know, when they had William Hague and stuff like that. A lot of that's going to happen. They're going to have this first term of the Labour Party. They're going to have a lot of infighting. Yeah. Um, I mean, I listened to um, question. uh, You know, Prime Minister's questions, and it was very civil. You know, yes sir, no sir, three bags full, and I thought. I knew Penny need to go and get a room, actually. It was that bad at the <laughs> moment. You know, you know, after about five or six years, uh, you know, they were like, you know, everybody says adults in the room. Yeah. But this well, Rishi Sunak don't gonna... care no more. He's, uh, he's got his plane that being gassed as we speak and is ready for takeoff. Yeah, but Nick, the thing is, can, you know, it just three it. weeks. Uh, unfortunately, the thing is that uh, we've run right out of time. I know, you the music. Oh, yeah, there it goes. <laughs> it's playing you off stage. Thanks for that, Ranjit. 0345 6060 073 
Friday, Saturday, Sunday night at 10, Nick Abbott, LBC. On your radio, on Global Player, and... Play LBC. Leading Britain's conversation, this is LBC. This is LBC from Global, leading Britain's conversation with Nick Abbott. I'd like to punch him in the face. You know, some whack job can say this stuff and get away with it. Pat texts, the air may be too dry in your closet. Try a humidifier to add a bit of moisture. If that doesn't work, blame sparkles. Is there anything that um, sparkles out of hazard and sparkles will not do to get attention? I think you're probably right about that because uh, this is an, uh, a, a highly air-conditioned closet, which means that it, the air is just pumping in just dry, dry, dry air. There's no moisture in here at all. I'm uh, shriveled up like a piece of old bacon. So I open the window to uh, let in a be- well, I was going to say fresh air. It's, it's almost, almost certainly not fresh, but at least it's outside air. But it's making quite a noise out there, isn't it? Can you hear that? Can you hear that noise? Yeah. Yeah. Is it too loud? I can hear it. Yeah. Too loud? Too loud for radio? No, it's not that bad. It's all right. I tell you what, it, it might cover up the, the sound of the thumping techno music from the bar downstairs. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, I'll persist with it for a minute, and then I'll shut the window. After I, you know, get a bit of... Uh, of moist air in here. <laughs> Steph says, the Donald was obviously listening to Radio 4's The Today programme this week. He doesn't want to debate Kamala, Kamala, because a lady using asparagus to make predictions said the next president of the US will be Michelle Obama. <laughs> what? <laughs> How do you use asparagus to make predictions? Is it how quickly it makes your pee smell? I mean, I can understand tea leaves, I get that. Uh, cards, you know, tarot cards, yeah, but asparagus, what do you do with the asparagus? Don't tell me. Um, she throws, uh, information coming in from next, she throws it on the floor and it spells out letters. <laughs> She's known as Mystic <laughs> Mystic Veg. Right. And they had that on the radio, did they? Wow. How times have changed, eh? Bodmin, Malcolm. Good morning, Nick. How are you, sir? I am great, mate. You sound a heck of a lot better, and it's so good to have you back on the microphone. You were, you were badly missed, my friend. Well, that's very nice. Thanks. Uh, hey, look, uh, uh, Trump, but first of all, Rachel Reeves and the state of the nation. Yeah. I, I think, and, and I honestly believe this, I think Rachel Reeves hates the Conservatives more than any other person in Great Britain. <laughs> and let me give you some some reason why I think oh, so. Yeah. She, she worked in the Bank of England. She worked in money, right? Finance. And it's a man's world, as the song says, right? Mm. And I think she will have stuff in her memory bank that is just burning at her. And I think this speech over the next few days, it'll, it'll be, I think she'll be fair. I don't think she'll lie. I don't think she's got it in her to lie. But I think she is going to give it the Tories, not both battles, but yeah. every battle she can yeah, find. They're damn good country. thrashing. And they'll um, probably like it. And, and, and I want like, every everybody listening, everybody I can talk to anywhere in the world, just to understand that the Conservatives... <clears throat> Two numbers, right? The Conservatives left a debt to the nation of three trillion. That's three thousand million. On Tuesday, there's going to be a big hoo ha about a sum of <laughs> twenty billion. A hoo ha. Now, a, no, you, you could do your stacking up at the pound notes, Nick, and tell yeah. us how high. It I can't goes. remember. But, um, three trillion would, would 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 go. But the thing is that this, Nick, right? She knew the. Everybody told us, look, there's this twenty billion pounds. Mm. But she said simply, Nick, Rachel Reeves and Starmer said quite simply, look, all we're doing is 
We have got this ironclad fiscal plan. We are following the government spending yeah. because government's numbers add up. So our numbers are going to add up. We're not going to add to our our woes. This is what we're spending. Mm-hmm. End of. And the same thing applies to the child benefit thing, Nick. So, um, which I'll, I'll I'll speak about briefly in a second. Yeah. But on 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 whichever the day is, Nick, next week when she speaks. I think she's going to be trolling the Tories so viciously about this 20 billion. And, and she will come out with a, a string of sentences that they will just not be able to argue with because she will be waiting, I think, for a little while for this day to come. Now, on Trump, Nick, and Kamala Harris. Yeah. Trump, the, I, I was watching CNN the other night, and Trump um, did, um, apparently, either this evening or last, he had about three different versions of mispronunciation of of her name Mm. but apparently the one he uses most it's there's um a a racial slur behind it which i don't fully who donald trump no yes (laughs) but the the, the word the the, the word the name kamala and the way he pronounces it is pronounced exactly the same as a word which i think may well be from latin america look it up i i but it it comes from a racial aspect, I think. Right. I saw this person of, of of it was a black man, I think, on CNN was saying the right. other yeah, the no doubt because that's all Donald and, Trump has. I mean, this is yeah. why he's running away from the debate because he knows that he has no chance of winning it. Yeah. He he could have yeah. won against Joe Biden because you know, bless him, he's not really at his best. You know, he's, he's people age differently, and uh, he has got to the age where he's just flat out old now. But yeah. uh, Trump knows that he doesn't and have a chance with somebody younger and more vital. You know, mind the point. No, I, he's a horrible man. And, and I tell you, I think there is genuine panic in in the Republican ranks. Oh, uh, completely. I think yeah. his, Freaking out. His, his VP pick, I think, is, is going to prove a very, very costly pick for Trump. But on, on the child benefit... Well, on, just on that, I, it's interesting that they, they picked the man who is just going to cement in place the support that they already have. Because, you know, these, these sort of phony religionists, yeah. the evangelicals and all of that crowd... They're going to vote for Trump. If, uh, if if Donald Trump knocked on their door and shot their dog, they'd still yeah. vote for him because they think that he's been delivered by God to save us. I mean, they're that crazy. So Please. this J.D. Vance guy seems to have been brought in in order to solidify the support from the, the phony religionists. But they're on Trump's side already. So he's and he's so extreme. He's, he's so yeah. weird that he isn't going to bring anybody in who is undecided. There's just no Please. chance that he's going, to op- he's, he's going to expand the appeal of the Trump ticket. So it's a terrible choice as far as Trump's concerned. If I was Donald Trump, I would have got a woman because that would, yes. that would, have, got some, that would have gone some way to sort of to lance the boil that is uh, Donald Trump's attitude, his, his well-documented attitude to women and the, the court case where he got... Uh, uh, found guilty of uh, sexual assault would have been rape, but at the time, rape wasn't described in the way that he actually assaulted that woman. So it was just sexual assault, and, and, and all all the evidence that has piled up about him, and not just evidence for externally. He's admitted it. He used to go on the Howard Stern show, which was a radio show in uh, the states, and boast about this stuff. Boast about walking into the dressing room at a Miss USA contest and see all these beautiful girls and they're naked. And nobody else could, no other man could walk in there, but he could because he owned the pageant. I mean, he's, he's admitted to all this stuff. So to, to pick a guy who's exactly like him, uh, but worse, is such a stupid move on his part. Uh, I can't believe they did it. Nick, on, on Vance, look, that he's. That, 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 the, the, the women thing, right? the, the, the women voters, 51% of, of the population in America, I assume, is, is, is the right person. Women are 51% of yeah. the population. Right. Wrong, right? Yeah. Wrong with, yeah. But the thing is, Nick, he's, he's launched in 20 or 21 into this rant about cap women and yes. women, women without children. Women without now, children, yeah. Leave the, 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 the men out of it, right? But almost every family in Britain and in America, I, I, I would imagine, has a female who isn't married. And this guy, Vance, is literally upset every per, every American person, I think, hmm. with a single member of 
single female member of their family with the things he an, an absolutely mindless. I mean, what's a cat woman for God's sake? Uh, well, it's, it's the, in his, uh, in his bizarre, twisted world. The cat woman is is a, is a woman who's got past um, child birthing age, but didn't have children for whatever reason. Maybe it's next. Um, and w- which could be physical, it could be anything. It, c- it could be that, you know, they need IVF, but he's apparently against that too. But the, 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 that brings me back like, to the, the fine thing I wanted to say, yeah. was that this, the, the, the child allowance row and the Labour Party and the, the seven MPs. I, I assumed, naively, and maybe stupidly, I don't know, that they, they were talking about family allowance, which was an allowance every mum gets, for every child. And the, that benefit was always paid to the mother, so the mother could get, she could pop along to the post office if, if if the man was, you know, off the rails right. or whatever, and spent all the weekly wages, yeah. and the mum had some money in her name mm-hmm. that she could take out and spend in the fashion she wanted. Yeah. But that's not what this is all about. No. It's, an, it's, it's an element of the, the allowance the Tories introduced, the benefit, rather, mm. the Tories introduced. Yeah. And it's so, in order to ease the cost of childcare. Well, well, yes, but years ago, Nick, if I went and signed on, me as the, the, the man, I was expected to be the one who'd sign on, I would claim for my wife, my children. But that's, that's what this is all about. It isn't all about child benefit. The mother has a book and goes along to the post office mm. and, and, and draws it out. It's actually the benefit thing. Which I didn't realise previously. I thought it was all about the family allowance thing. Well, uh, they, 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 yeah, yeah, my... my um interest in politicians uh, opinion on this ends with the knowledge that yeah. they get three children's benefits well, they were. five yeah. grand over five thousand each as far as i'm aware three yeah just like they get free electric free well almost free food rent free food probably rent, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. mortgages paid yeah uh, this, all, all that has to stop next if they have to increase the wage a little and, and this outside lobbying work and and i mean did you did, God, this afternoon, a story by Geoffrey Cox. Last year, oh. he earned eight hundred and odd thousand pounds from lawyer work, which added up Nick to sixty days' work in the year last year. So sixty days, seven sevens are forty-nine. Look, so add on another fortnight. Looking at nine weeks out of his working year was spent on legal work. For God's sake, that guy is meant to be. B- being an MP for eighty odd, is it eighty three or ninety three thousand pound a year? Yeah, plus a quarter of a million in expenses that they all uh, yeah. max out. Yeah, it's absolutely extraordinary. Well, the, the they, they used to call him the member for the British Virgin Islands because he was forever yes. in the British Virgin Islands or working on behalf of the British Virgin Islands. In uh, some cases, against the interests of the government, he he would represent the British Virgin yeah. Islands in their uh, dispute with the British government. I think on. Uh, um, T- uh, tax evasion schemes that are based uh, in the uh, BVI. It was absolutely think- incredible. A, a, a member of, a, 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 of the ruling party of the government is acting against the government as a lawyer. I mean, what the hell? I think, Nick, that their wage is probably only about a third of the total amount they can actually claim, if, if not less. Now, what are the job in the world, let alone in, in, in the UK? Yeah. What are the job in the world? Would you earn your salary is X, and then the, the money you actually get paid into your bank is three times X? It's it's nuts, man. It, it's it's madness. Well, to be I mean, to, to have a supposed full time job and then to have multiple other jobs on top, how yeah. how is that allowed? I mean. It's uh, but people say, oh, well, we have to... And it's always the case. They, they say it with this, and they say it with the water companies and any other failing business. They say, oh, well, we must pay the chief executive £10 million and, and then give them a bonus on top for excellence in, uh, you know, coming into work uh, every uh, other day. You know what, Nick? There are so many wrong things, Nick, in the country at the minute. But if this Labour government doesn't put things right, which are clearly wrong, mm. I don't think they will ever put right. Like the, the, the MPs that were working outside of their MPs role. Right. If they don't put it right now, there'll never be another opportunity, because I don't think a country, this, this nation, will ever have a government that will follow 
a government as bad as the one we've just seen <laughs> yeah. off, with such a huge majority. It's, I don't think it'll ever yeah, happen because uh, I it, don't think. I think you're completely yeah. correct, but it does feel as though somebody's opened the window. I mean, I know I have opened the window in here, but uh, you know, metaphorically yeah. speaking, if somebody's opened the window in the country and some fresh air is blown in, and and yeah. and that thing that we didn't have for a long while has just hoved into view. Hope, yes, hope. Yes. Is Absolutely. back. Yeah. Good to talk to you, Malcolm. Thanks for that. 0345 6060 973. Friday, Saturday, Sunday night at 10. Nick Abbott, LBC. Leading Britain's conversation. Nick Abbott. Alexa, send a comment to LBC. I am not one of your fans. Just as an indication of uh, how far things have changed in such a short period of time, I was looking at the uh, latest polling between. Uh, Kamala Harris and Donald Trump. And Donald Trump was winning over Joe Biden over and over and over again. Every poll pretty much said that uh, Trump was going to win and he was uh, up in the key states because apparently there's, you know, most of America decides regardless of who happens to be running which way they're going to vote. And it all comes down to a few tens of thousands of people in some key states that are are undecided about which way they're going to go. Remarkable, really. Um, and it's flipped around. As of, uh, what date is it today? It's just gone the... Tw- okay, so this is um, two, three days ago. Vice President Kamala Harris opened up a marginal two percentage point lead over Donald Trump after Joe Biden ended his re-election campaign. So she's already up in the polls. She's already beating Donald Trump. I mean, but not by much. When um, <clears throat> when uh, Biden was the, there, it was Trump 44 and uh, Biden on 42. Now it's the other way around. And this is before the American people have really been introduced to her and before they've had time to uh, listen to Donald Trump ranting and raving about how unfair everything is and how he's not going to debate um, Kamala Harris because he's brave. <clears throat> Running away because, uh, you know, he's very, very brave. And they're going to have time to digest all this and uh, pause and think about what it is that they almost did. They're going to think about what they've done and uh, make sure, hopefully, that they don't do it again. Maybe the whole human race needs to give itself a round of applause. Not yet. Let's not get carried away. Let's, let's wait until November, eh? Tooting. <laughs> Tooting. Hello, Jan. Hi, good evening, Nick. It's yeah. great to have you back on the air. Thanks. It's good to hear you. So, <clears throat> um, so I've got a, a, a few points to make. One is about it's, it's very puzzling. This thing about Trump. I don't know what you think, but but it's they say in in September he 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 will be he'll be he has to he'll be he could be charged with the thirty four felon. Isn't it? He, he's, he's due to go back to... For sentencing. To trial or something. Isn't it sentencing? Or sentencing. Yeah. But at the same time, they say as, as a, pres- as a <clears throat> uh, prospective presidential candidate, he's yeah. immune from... No. From from being charged. No, so I, b- I believe that his um, um, MAGA fans uh, in the <clears throat> courts... Now, I'm a bit... Um, because all, all of this happened when I was ill, so I've got to be honest, I wasn't really paying very much attention. But as far mm-hmm. as I'm aware, if he becomes a president, he will have presidential immunity for anything. Uh, yeah. uh, so up up to and including uh, jailing his uh, political opponents, a la Vladimir, <laughs> bl- like Vladimir Putin would. You know, if he, if he doesn't like uh, Hillary or um, uh, Kamala or whoever it might be who gets put up against him next time, he can just put them in jail and uh, carry on oh. regardless. That, that's what they've given him. They've given him, they've given him well, the world's worst human being, carte blanche to do anything he likes. What could possibly yeah, it's go quite wrong? it's scary, isn't it? It's, yeah. it's really quite scary because he's, he's against NATO. He's not for supporting um, y- Ukraine, you know, mm. uh, and um, he would stop all aid going to Ukraine. So it's, he's going to put everything into disarray if he does get in. I think you could sum up what you just said by just saying he's pro-Putin. Weird weird that right-wingers in this country and in America are so very pro-Putin. I I wonder why that might be. Can you think? That's very dangerous, isn't it, Nick? Because, I mean, look, we got... The the, the new... 
the head of the you know the new head of the British Army is saying um, we the UK have got to be ready to go to war within the next three years. So I think they're looking <laughs> they're looking at no well, three the years army and everything ready and and because of this problem with um, the threats from not just. Not just Trump, but mm. Trump in relation to those. Well, the, 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 the anagram for them, but the crink countries. They crink. Crink stands for um, China, crink. China, Russia, Russia. I- Iran, and North Korea. Yeah. The four countries. They call them the four. What do they call them? There's a name for them. There, there, there's a name that's the Axis that's of four. Evil. Are they <laughs> reeling that one out again? I, 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 the name's gone from me now. I, I came across it, but but it's um, the four the four the four countries that uh, the uh, te- well, what they can do, they can do so much harm. Yeah. But, but the thing is, Trump Trump is. I mean, isn't it very worrying, Nick? I mean, to think that he look he he's all NATO, all Europe for um, NATO countries are for helping Ukraine, but not necessarily to put so that Ukraine can put. Um, well, you'd have to say that uh, everything has been going really well for Vladimir Putin. He got uh, Brexit. Now, if he did not personally engineer Brexit <laughs> for this country in order to destabilize the European Union, then <laughs> it could not possibly have gone better for him than if he had actually written the script. So let's assume mm. that he had something to do with it. And our own security services were pretty certain that uh, Vladimir Putin did insert himself into the Brexit process. And they were quite um, astonished that uh, Mr. Blobby yeah, 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 yeah. Wait, 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 wait. didn't appear to be um, interested in looking into that issue at all. Very, very curious. Yeah. Gosh, I wonder why. So, uh, shall I shall I move on to my next my next bit then? Because okay. I'll leave that. Yeah. So, so I had I had um. Uh, and, uh, I was going to say no. Let me go to the next one because I might not have time to, to say the other one about that image, <laughs> that iconic image that you mentioned. You know, oh, yeah. it, it brings to mind some. Um, um, You're talking about when uh, Donald Trump uh, got hit by a piece of flying glass and it nicked his ear ever so slightly. He he got up and he punched the air with the uh, flag behind him and a perfect blue sky. It reminded me of the of the the soldiers raising the flag. I think it's Iwo Jima, wasn't it? I mean, Mm -hmm. one of the most famous photographs ever taken. Uh, yeah, it, it, it had the same uh, sort of quality about it. It had that that perfect um, diagonal, top left to bottom right. Yeah, and, and that's in that uh, Nick. That's in those uh, the well known painting of, of Liberty by Delacroix, going back to the French Revolution. But it is picked up. It's used in political posters. So you've got this that. Um, the figure called Liberty mm. fighting, so you know, with, with the hands raised up like that with yeah. the flag. But it also calls to mind those, you know, when 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 the men went to the what the moon, the images of or, or yes, going exactly. to the moon, where yeah. they lay the flag. You know, they're, mm-hmm. they're, they're triumphant, they're heroic, they're, right. as you say. Yeah. It's com- and it was that it, the, he knew that there were going to be those award-winning photographers of of the um, that. Well, um, I mean, now now we're getting well, hang on a minute. Now we're getting into conspiracy uh, theory uh, territory. No, I no, I don't no. believe that he in that moment uh, thought anything other than I don't want to look like I'm cowering. I have an audience mm. in front of me, so I'm going to use this opportunity to look brave and tough, <laughs> and then my security oh. people can uh, bundle me into a car and I'll be off. So I think that's what went through his mind. He, he didn't okay. want to be carried off on a stretcher to, to make himself look weak so oh, he okay. so he just did that punching the air thing and there happened to yeah. be a photographer at the in the perfect yeah. place and he just took a he just pressed his finger on the shutter and that brilliant image came through okay. so it was all luck but that's what mm, behind yeah. most great Photographs. They're just mm-hmm. moments of luck. You happen to be in the right place at the right time and you saw it uh, unfolding mm-hmm. and you put the sh- <coughs> camera to your eye and you press the shutter. Nick, do I have time to make another point quickly about switching over to Kamala? Yeah. Kamala Harris. Um, apparently her name means, uh, it's, her mother was Southern Indian, so but her name means lotus flower. Oh. Uh, and, and she's written up like that. Her book, she wrote a memoir going back of some years mm. to, to yeah and, and it's a bestseller now since she's become vice 
you know, the, the, How do the, these people get the time to write um, memoirs and books? I mean, uh, doing a full-time oh, job no, with oh. everything that she was doing. She used to be the, uh, worked in the district attorney's office and she was the uh, district attorney for the state of California. And uh, Yeah, yeah. She, uh, she, how do they get she, the time? Well, she, I don't know. She's got a strong academic background. The book, her book, her memoir called The Truth We Hold. Mm. And it's and she's got the points, points um, in it about... Um, to twelve things, but but it's interesting because she's a, she's gone to the best selling list, and so has that guy Ron, the vice president, the other right. one. He's written something called Hillbilly the Elegy. Hillbilly Elegy, yeah. Well, he, that, yes. that, that's that's uh, quite an old book, and that's one of the reasons why he is where he is because he got famous from writing that book. And it's it's, it's in a bestseller too. So both of yeah, them, no both vice presidents, are uh, are. Uh, uh, um, the best selling, but on the best selling list. Yeah, but I I just wonder at the the um, how wise it was to bring J D Vance, who is sort of <laughs> the, the distilled nasty part of Donald mm. Trump, and this kind of mm. uh, this superior well, white evangelical religiosity that uh, trails around with him because. All of those people are already on Donald Trump's side. He's not going to bring anybody new in because people will be recoiling in horror <laughs> at the bizarre things that he says. Yeah, he doesn't even want women to be able to have IVF treatment no. if they're infertile. It, it's just so, I mean, it, it's so extreme. Girl, it's just really? amazing. The, the, the people with the money, I mean, you think that, you know, all those billionaires who are <laughs> supporting Donald Trump for, I would imagine... The reason that they will pay less tax, they imagine, under Donald Trump's premiership, that, that all those smart people would have conspired to put a person like J.D. Vance on the ticket with the Donald Trump, when what Donald Trump actually needed was somebody softer, a woman for instance, somebody who could, like, round out the corners of his message and stand next to him and uh, and smile, and people might think, oh, well, you know, maybe it's not that bad. But no, they, they got a, a preacher from the Deep South who's uh, more of an extremist than Donald Trump is. It's just, I mean, that's, you know, smart people can do a lot of stupid things, and we're relying on them to keep doing them. Thanks a lot, Jan. 0345 6060 973. 12.30 on LBC, the news headlines with Tim Daly. Nick Abbott on LBC. Call 0345 6060 973. Please hold the line. I'm trying to connect you. <laughs> yeah, I'm trying to connect a person in Camden called Max. Hello, Max. Hi, Nick. What do you have? <laughs> uh, always good to talk to you. Um, yeah, well, my point is quite short but positive about Kamala Harris. Hmm. Um, well, I saw her accepting you know her nomination etc i just felt uh, i don't know if anyone else agrees i just felt there's a there's a chance yeah like a weight had been lifted off your shoulders exactly because with biden unfortunately there was no chance whatsoever no he knew that yeah um but uh i think i mean she's capable I don't know what the downside to her is particularly, but um, I think she's going to work around that. And if she plays to what Biden's um, cabinet has done, well, his his, um, uh, his run has done, and be positive about that, push that forward, mm. then we start a chance. And it's it's like a kind of, I don't know, hero or heroine coming into a, a situation to possibly save the day. Exactly right. Yeah, it does feel like the cavalry are coming over the horizon and all is not yeah. lost. Yeah. Yeah. I, I just wonder... Kind of Hollywood ending to the situation. Yeah, exactly. I, uh, ju I just wonder who she's going to have as her running mate because there's, uh, you know, I'm, I'm just learning about all of these people for the very first time. Mm. I mean, there's, there's this guy called Pete Buttigieg who's the mm. transport secretary at the moment, but he's gay. So I don't think, I mean, you would say that America isn't ready for a woman president, but a country is never and, ready and for a, a gay woman. running mate. Yeah, but a, a country is never ready for a woman president until they get one. You know, we weren't ready for a female prime minister until we got one. And sure. then, then it doesn't seem so weird anymore. It's like um, females uh, doing the, um, the commentary on football matches on Match of the Day. At yeah, first, it yeah. seemed, oh, no, what's this? This is wrong. And now you don't even think about it. Well, I don't. I, you don't even think about it. It's, you, you, you watch a, uh, 
uh, uh, you know, the, the highlights, and then you realise afterwards that you were listening to a woman doing the commentary, because it, it's just not a thing anymore. So, but I don't, I think maybe, though, it's a bit too much of a leap to have a woman and a gay running mate. So, there's a bloke who uh, I don't, uh, as I said, I'm, I'm learning about all these people for the very first time. Sure. But there's, there's a guy who used to be, I think he was in the Marines, and, mm. then, he, and then he became an astronaut. And I'm thinking, yeah, that's the guy, right there. I, I mean, he's practically yeah, the embodiment yeah. of the American flag. It's got to be him. Well, I, I don't know about him, but yes, I would agree with you on, on that description. And, um, and he likes guns, and he's uh, from the South, and, you know, all, all of these things are uh, adding up in his favor. He sounds great. Yeah. Well, I'm, <laughs> <laughs> I'm sending him round. Yeah. But, I mean, as far as the gay, um, uh, 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 you know, sort of... Vice president. Uh, vice, vice, vice president, I'm saying. Maybe that would be too much mm. to start with. Yeah. Um, possibly for America. But I think that my point is... Well, but, but then again, well, you know, they, they, they're they not ready for um, a gay uh, vice president or president until they get one. It's like we weren't ready for a gay prime minister until we got one. But there was he, so you're talking about, <laughs> or not? <laughs> I, I was expecting a moment's silence for the for the, for the, for the gears to <laughs> click around and you try to figure out what I meant. I, I'm not saying one way or the other. You might think well, that, Max. I, know, but I, think we have, I couldn't. One, I could not fine, possibly but, comment. Um, you know. Oh, is that the end of that conversation then? No, it's not at all. Ah, I'm carrying on. on if you want to. Yes, please. But what I was going to say was that I'm hopeful for um, Kamala Harris, and, mm. and it's like. This is possible. Before it wasn't possible, yeah. but now it's Now I'm possible. thinking it's not possible. I'm thinking it's probable. I, I just don't think that the American people are going to fall in love with the stink that's on Donald Trump. I mean, how much more evidence do you need that this guy is a wrong one? I agree. And if they do, then the American people need to be watched, if you know what I'm getting at. <laughs> but the other thing is this. When I was talking to... Um, <laughs> I, no, but anyway, listen. When I was talking to a friend, or well, not a friend, but I was on the bus in London, mm. and I met a couple who were American. They were very middle class, well, nice, cool, 30-year-old Americans, mm. thinking, you know, far thinking. And I obviously asked them, I said, the question, well, when, what do you think is going to happen yeah. in, in the next election? And uh, they said that they were obviously Democrats, and they had a lot of friends who were activists and political activists, but they kind of checked out because of the situation. I, with dear old, um, uh, Biden. Well, I mean dear old, um, Biden. Joe Biden, yeah. Because they realised that they Too old. there was something they could do yeah. to make the situation better. Yeah. Uh, anyway, the other thing they said was, and interestingly enough, Two points to this. One, I said, but it's such a, such a, not a shame, but it's weird that no one's tried to assassinate Donald Trump. The next day, <laughs> it was that assassination attempt. Wow. And it, also... It, somebody needs to look into you, Max. Well, possibly. But anyway, I was, I was, I, it was just, you know, comment I might have made mm. another time. But, um... At the same time, this this girl who was very kind of, you know what I mean, really switched on American duty, 30-year-old type of girl who was, yeah. you know, knew everything. And she said, well, um, uh, I, I, friend of mine, I'm not into it myself, but a friend of mine told me her client client said there would be next, the next president of America, America would be a female so there you go. It's interesting that I saw a clip of, um, uh, oh God, what's his name? The, um, um, oh, an ex-president mm -hmm. from the 1970s whose name has just escaped my grasp. Um, and he was saying, he was asked by a school child, uh, do you think that America will ever be ready for uh, a female president? And he said, yeah. um, I think it'll happen like this, that there will be a, an, a, a female vice president mm -hmm. and that for whatever reason, the president has to bow out and she will then 
uh, sent to the top office. That's how I think it will um, wow. it will happen. And he was completely correct in every respect. Well, almost. We Not shall quite. see. We, we shall, shall see. see. Yeah. All right. Exciting times. Thanks a lot, Max. Uh, I would be surprised if somebody doesn't take a pot shot at Kamala Harris. I, I, I'm, if I was a betting person, I'd lay money on it. It's probably not the sort of thing you're allowed to bet on, though, is it? Um, otherwise, it might um, alert the authorities to your presence. Warning! Warning! <laughs> they'd, they'd, uh, America would uh, give um, a British Secret Service a call and have them, uh, you know, pop over for a quick chat. No, I would, ex I, I would be surprised if somebody did not take a uh, shot at Kamala Harris. Um, Steve says, glad you're back, Nick, but your voice sounds slightly lower than normal. Yeah. If it continues, you'll be able to do the action movie trailers that have always had that low, husky voice saying, coming to a screen near you soon. Yeah. Coming to a screen near you soon. Superman and Catwoman versus Wolverine and Magneto. A must-see film. They're still making those things, aren't they? They've completely run out of ideas. Speaking of which, Ellie says, that ceremony wasn't very interesting. I watched it for about an hour on and off and then switched off, says Ellie. It seemed to be going on for a very long time. I think it's still on now. But it was raining. Such a shame. But I only saw the first half an hour, and uh, it made me want to see the British opening ceremony. But, you know, the, the cost of putting on the Olympics is so ruinously expensive. Do they have to come up with a, a, an opening ceremony as well? I mean, is it absolutely necessary? Can't they just get on with the running and the jumping? It seems a bit... But I don't know. The, the, the Olympics is this juggernaut of uh, self-important people who mostly have never lifted a a bat or or a baton or run a race or jumped over a hurdle in their lives they're just in it for the uh, the schmoozing and the free gifts you know the sparkly watches and the the uh, free holidays and all that stuff and they just insist on everything when the olympics come to town it's like your country is uh, taken over by a dictatorship and they want the roads to run in uh, the opposite direction, and they want you to uh, concrete over your parks and uh, all the rest of it. And the money that they require is just staggering. Do they have to put on an opening ceremony as well? Maybe they should... Uh, because I seriously doubt you're going to get anything as, um, as sort of... Uh, as... as reflects the society of the country that's hosting it as much as ours. I mean, I can't think of any other that even came close to ours for just constant Britishness and amusement. And then you're also not going to get anything as spectacular and astonishing as the one that happened in China. I mean, all those thousands of people that were drilled on pain of death, I would imagine, to all beat in unison. I mean, that was incredible. So you ain't going to beat either of those two things. And you're not going to beat uh, Los Angeles for, you know, having that Liberace thing that they did opening with uh, 50 grand pianos all opening at the same time and a guy in... Uh, <laughs> do you remember? It was a guy in one of those James Bond backpacks who hovered over the stadium. I mean, do they have to keep trying to outdo each other? It's all about the games surely it's all about the the most perfect humans in existence it's the species showing off what we can do essentially it's the greatest show in the world for that very reason that this is the best of us the human race this is as good as we get and you know some events uh, show off the human race better than others I'm not sure that horse dancing <laughs> is actually showing the best of human beings. Our, our ability to uh, force other animals to do our bidding, perhaps. But, uh, you know, like gymnastics and uh, decathlon and uh, all of that. That's the best of us. Maybe just get on with doing that and skip the, uh, the, the, the waving and the attempt to entertain at the beginning of it. Just a thought.
save a lot of money. 0345 6060. And with the money you save, you could actually give it to the people that are providing this show. You know, the athletes, not the executives who are on millions. Give it to the athletes who don't take home enough to keep them off only fans. I was reading at length in the mail today. <laughs> they were all over that story. <laughs> they, were, they were both um, uh, condemnatory and um, uh, the, uh, lasciviously obsessed. Here's another picture of uh, an athlete wearing uh, not very many clothes. Isn't, aren't they disgusting, was the attitude. <laughs> 0345-6060-973, text 84850, email nick a at lbc.co.uk, and if you're on Twitter, it's at LBC. Friday, Saturday, Sunday night at 10, Nick Abbott, LBC. This is LBC with Nick Abbott. Call 0345-6060-973, tweet at LBC, text 84850. Come on, we're running late! We are running late. Ricky says... I watched the Paris opening ceremony and tell you what, Nick, the Brexit lot will be on their war horses. They were talking in... Fr <laughs> talk talking in French. What? In French. Can you believe that? Simon says, Trump can't debate. He is bravely doing the long march around his golf course. No, that is incorrect. Donald Trump doesn't march around the golf course. The only marching he does is to his golf cart. And that does the marching for him. And uh, Rachel texts, it's a shame to hear that Kamala Harris is a Marxist fraud. <laughs> uh, uh, and just for balance, Anthony says, Trump will be president, suck it up. And then uh, gives me a kiss on the end of it for some reason. I imagine that's what he meant by the X. You misspelt the word will, though. I mean... Ordinarily, it doesn't upset me, but uh, in this case, I'm going to be pedantic. Harringay. Hello, Frank. Uh, good morning. Thanks for taking my call, Nick. Nick, I'm going to be as quick as I can. The president you're referring to is President Ford, Gerald Ford. Ah, yeah, that's a, right. A, a Republican we shall know as a likes which you'll probably won't see for a long time. Um, the just to, just, just to... before you go on, on that subject, it, it's the way that people speak that is such a revelation. It, it's as though we have forgotten what, what, what sort of classic politicians used to sound like. Because yes. now that we are being spoken to as though we're human beings and not just statistics receptors. Yeah. And that, that used to be the way. I mean, uh, it, uh, you know, when Gordon Brown speaks, for instance, uh, you, you may not like him or anything about him, but he seems I'm, like I'm a, a serious person. <gasps> well, he, well he, 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 he hasn't made money since he's um, uh, uh, left office. He's, he's, uh, he's, he's got drilled into sort of world poverty, yes. basically. A decent got, man. Uh, uh, you know... Thoroughly, fundamentally decent man. Uh, but, uh, the other, so I'm getting back onto this. The, the senator you're referring to is Mark Kelly. Kelly, married yeah. uh, Arizona, very important state, swing state. Very, uh, very tough, very tough uh, uh, Senate battle will be going there between uh, 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 Kari Lake, uh, uh, Trumpist, and, uh, and I think on the Democrat, the Lake, I think. Um, uh, and also, he was married. To, he was married to Gabriel Giffords, who was a congresswoman, and who was shot in the head. That's and right. I think people, yeah, in, in that in that, in that sort of uh, festival, basically. Um, but the, the Democratic bench, in terms of vice presidents, I don't think a gay and a, a, fem a, a black female will will, 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 will no. win because of the prejudices. But the Democratic bench is actually quite strong on the VP side. The, the top of the list will be Governor Steve Bashir, who is governor of Kentucky. He ran on a pro-abortion ticket in a red state hmm. and is very incredibly popular in that state. Although it will probably be not enough to carry that state, but the important ones will obviously be uh, Gretchen Whitmer of Michigan. Yeah, no, no, state. no, no, not two women. No, I know. But I'm just, no, I know, I agree, but I'm just saying the Democratic Party. Cory Booker, black senator from Maryland. Right. There's also got Josh Shapiro, a name to watch to look out for, governor of Pennsylvania. Now, that would be a crucial one, because obviously Pennsylvania is very tight, um, and uh, he's, he's fairly popular there as well. So there are options. 
Uh, they won't be Gavin Newsom because no, one slick. is yeah. too slick, and also he's California. So uh, yeah, uh, Kamala right. Harris is California as well. Yeah, yeah. Won't bring anything. Two thirds Democrat. No, no, uh, uh, nothing to the ticket basically. Just based so on looking... just based on my limited uh, knowledge, I, I'm I'm going for the former astronaut and U.S. Navy captain, this uh, yeah. Kelly guy, and he's the uh, representative for Arizona, which is a yes. Republican state. It's not a Democrat state at all, and yet he won. No, there. It's, a, it's a purple state now because the governor is Kathy Hobbs, I think, who's a Democrat and narrowly beaten Kari Lake. Right. The congressional delegation is now more evenly split. He used to be an it was Barry Goldwater's estate uh, before, uh, you know, both 64 presidential candidate against uh, uh, Lyndon Johnson. Yeah. But now it's becoming a purple state because of the increase, increasing Hispanic population. Right. So it's a swing state. Remember, that's the one that was called by Fox News, and that's what the, oh. for, uh, the Republicans uh, riled, remember, well, the, the, when Fox News called yeah. it for, Donald, for Biden. Donald Trump had a fit that you could uh, see from space. Yeah, absolutely. So uh, the Democratic Prince, there's also Pritzker, the other Prince of Illinois. He's actually quite good as well. So there's a Democratic bench for the VP, although a bit more limited, still, there is still there. But I think the two are Mark Kelly, number one, and Steve Bashir, uh, who's actually uh, like, would, you, would be traditionally now called a, a moderate to conservative Democrat which could appeal to the sort of white working class that's drifted away from the Democratic Party. It's fascinating, isn't it, that, that I and pretty much everybody else on Earth, I bet, had just given up this race at the moment that Donald Trump's ear got cut and that photograph came out. I yep. thought, that's it, it's over, forget it. So um, did I. We're on um, a, a, a fast track to hell. And yep. um, th but they do say, I mean, I know it's... Uh, um, it's an often used phrase, but a week is a short time in, it's a long time rather, in politics. And well, it's just, a day is. It's a just, day is. <laughs> yeah, a day, that's right. And it's just turned out around so completely, it, and it, from all the way over here, from 3,000 miles away, it does mm. feel as though the, uh, the, the temperature has changed and well, the, a window has been opened and we're breathing oxygen again. And a quick one, a fundamental one also, is that although Kamala Harris is perceived to be a weak candidate, what's her achievements? That's a good question. The important thing is that the issue of age is now turned on to Trump, Donald yeah. Trump, hasn't it? Completely. Yes. Absolutely. Because he, he, uh, yeah. he in, uh, evinces all of the problems that he um, was uh, pegging on Joe Biden. He forgets yeah. people's names. He can't finish sentences. He mispronounces yeah. words. He Animal seems to have a... <laughs> yeah, he makes no sense. He keeps going on and on about the same things. Would you rather get killed by a shark or uh, uh, the or, or electrocuted by the battery in a boat? I mean, it's it's just insane. And he keep, and he just can't shut up. That's his big. That's one of his biggest problems. He just can't Trouble. shut up. Trouble is that his supporters are people like cult like, and there's sort of people that. Yeah, when it, when, even though know, when it's wrong, they can't admit to being wrong. A bit like no. Tom Albert is here, yeah. basically. Yeah, you know. completely. Yeah, but the, you, you, those people are gone. You can't reach those people, but they're not the majority. That's the no. thing. Yeah. It's the suburban women. They're going to be the crucial vote on abortion or what have you. A lot of abortion, uh, I question, I might, I think, I may be wrong on this, so I may be corrected, are now being put on the ballots as well. And so guns. Drive, I mean, and pe guns. people forget that... And you just assume everybody's a gun nut in America, but they're not. Fifty-seven percent of Americans want more gun control, but they are yeah. completely ignored. Yeah, because uh, it, it, the gun lobby is so strong, you know, it just punches above its weight. Well, they got they got the money. They they and yeah. it's, it's not even a large amount of money. It's only tens of millions. Mm -hmm. Um, compare that to Elon Musk, who's famously giving forty-five million a month to uh, Donald Trump's uh, election campaign. Mm -hmm. That's scary. Well, yeah, exactly. So we want the world run by people like Elon Musk, for crying out loud. It, it is like, I mean, he's going to be hollowing out a volcano for his lair any day now. Frank, <laughs> thanks for that. Uh, Hertfordshire, Jeremy. Oh, hang on a minute. One moment, please. Jeremy. Hello, yeah. Jeremy. Hello, yeah. Um, I don't know if anybody's made the point yet, but um, I think Kamala Harris has got a really good chance of winning, but 
do you honestly think that Trump is going to turn around and say, oh, well done, Kamala, fair fight, you won? <laughs> no, no way. But the difference this time around is he won't be in the White House while he's saying it. He'll be outside. Uh, uh, true, yeah, I hadn't thought of that. But do you think that'll stop him? No, I don't think it'll stop him. And no, his, uh, his, his, his dingling cult him. fans are um, saber-rattling at the moment, saying essentially that if we don't win, then it's a fixed election, and if it's a fixed election, then we're going to take our guns and we're going to go out in the street and we're going to start uh, killing other Americans. I mean, remember, yeah. that, that's what we're talking about here, is yeah. a civil war they're talking about. But, they, but then, they're not going to do that those people. I mean, they would take the lift to get from the lobby to the first floor. You really think they're going to go to war? Not a chance. And oh. they're going to be going to war with the actual army. <laughs> those, uh, the dingalings are going to go up against actual army people if they decide that that's the route that they want to take. So there's absolutely no chance of that whatsoever. They, they just shout a lot and they make a big noise, but that's the end of it. Uh, I think you misunderstood me. Go on. I, I wasn't saying that anybody would be going to war. I just didn't see, couldn't see that if Trump would accept oh. losing the election right, to well, a, a uh, young woman. But, I, but that wouldn't matter if it was just him complaining. What I thought that you meant was that he would uh, rouse his uh, cult fans no, no, into no, action. No, 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 I wasn't saying that. Oh, well, uh, it doesn't, it doesn't, it doesn't matter, matter then. It doesn't happen. <clears throat> Not saying it couldn't happen, because yeah. he's a dangerous man. Yeah. Um, but no, I was simply saying that if Kamala Harris wins, he won't accept it anyway. Right, it doesn't matter, though. I mean, it makes no difference whether he accepts it this time around, because he doesn't have the weight of the White House behind him. He'll just be um, he'll just be whining on the outside. I am the most fabulous whiner. I, I and I'm a whiner, and I keep whining and whining. And he'll be a figure of fun, and people will be laughing at him, which is the thing he hates the most. Thanks for that. Uh, if you missed any part of this uh, super show, then I think that you will find that it is put up the internet as a podcast. Now, the idea is we take the news and most of the ads out, mostly, which means it takes less time to listen to. You'll use less electricity. And with the money you save, you'll be able to buy one of Donald Trump's hoodies in double extra large size. Actually, they're only available in small. All the double extra large is sold out. I'm not making that up. They actually have. It's on a Global Player. It's called Nick Abbott, The Whole Show Podcast. If you haven't got Global Player, it's free. Get it from your app store or globalplayer.com. I'll be back tonight at 10 o'clock. 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 I'll be back tonight. In the quiet of the ancient halls. A book of secrets softly calls Pages filled with mystic lore A guide to magic and so much more Bound in wisdom crafted fine In every line enchantment shine For those who seek the arcane's mind this tome reveals the hidden light Arcane guide with knowledge deep Unlocking spells in shadow steep In every test it lights the way Through trials faced by night and day